Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio. This is one of your hosts, Tyson Roush. And what a what a weekend this has been. What a time to be a Jets fan. We got last-second losses. We got firings. We got rumors. We got chaos. We got happy fans. We got angry fans. We got the life of a Jets fan. Mr. Primetime, how are you, man? What a week in the life of a Jeff fan is right, dude. I got the popcorn ready. I, I want to hear from any Jeff fans that genuinely did not enjoy the final 19 seconds of that game. The swing of emotions, dude. Carr missing the first one and then hitting it right again on the very next play. It's unbelievable. So Jets. Dude, I, I can't wait to hear from the fans tonight. So we're at Talk Jets Radio, Instagram and Twitter. Let's Talk Jets Radio on YouTube. And we cannot thank everybody enough for all of the chaos on our YouTube channel. Everybody joining us, comments, the feedback, everything. Cannot thank everybody enough, man. It's been at this point it's just completely overwhelming. It's just it's nuts. We're having a blast. Thursday night, we have a very special YouTube viewing. We are going to recap the Adam Gase press conference. So we are going to live through that fine moment in Jets history where they sold us a bag of shit. So we'll do that. But uh, let's what we're going to do prime time is we're going to bring on Mr. Tyrone, who I know is chomp at the bit right now. Here we go. Tyrone, what's up? What's up, Tyrone? <laughs> Yo, is it a great Yo. time to be a Jets fan? Oh, my God. I couldn't wait for the night, bro. Like, prime time, you're not, bro, listen, you couldn't even, you couldn't even explain that was the best 19 seconds of football I've ever seen in my life. I've been getting messages all week in my DM. Guys, he's got things to say, man. You got a Jeff fan. I can't believe you said that. Oh, my God. I just want to let anybody who has a problem with it, I give two shits, okay? Greg Williams should go in the ring of honor for what he did for us as Jeff fans. Guys, how you guys doing tonight? Doing great, dude. You know, doing it's funny. It's like better. once, I mean, the flow of emotion and, and um, Romeo actually sent out a, a link of, of me and Kevin going through it like live. I mean, I was cursing out Derek Carr. I was cursing out the Jets. I hated everything, dude. I was cursing out the water boy, my own beer vendor, everybody. And then it was like the swing of emotions. Then you go to the win and you're like, thank God Greg Williams saved the tank. And then you, and you look, you listen to Adam Gase try to even justify why he didn't get involved. And he's like, I wish I called the timeout. You have nothing else. Other, your only primary focus is that play. You're not on offense, so you're not calling any plays. You're literally staring at the goddamn field. And it just shows you how truly incompetent he is. I, it, I mean, he's going to get fired. I mean, he dug so many holes for himself. He can't even explain himself out of holes. But Tyrone, the swing of emotion. And, and then the funny thing is, I'm sitting there celebrating. I'm like, what a relief. Tank is still on. Kevin kept saying, no, we saved Trevor Lawrence. We still have a chance. And then there's fans that are actually mad. Like, bro, you can't be happy about that. Do what? Like, how can I not be happy? The dream is still alive. The dream is the number one pick. That's the dream. Like, a, a loss is a win. A win is a loss. That's how we got to look at it. Yo, I don't understand anybody who really has a problem with that. Like I said, man, I was really like, yo, they're about to F this up. I was so scared. I think it was either prime time. My Tyson hit me. That was prime time. He was like, yo, it's not over yet. Yo, I was so terrified, bro. Like, I thought, I really thought we was about to screw that up. And then, and then, and then the great Greg Williams comes through with the most amazing thing that's ever been done in Jet history. He did what the fuck he wanted to do, bro. He did, he did what he should have did. You know, man. And what? zero man coverage. Like, it makes no sense uh, to uh, me. Uh, Go ahead. Tyrone, aren't you fascinated, though? Like, we, we keep hearing from the media and even some fans, like, that Greg Williams deserved to get fired because that's what he is. Like, he wasn't trying to tank. He wasn't trying to lose that game. You know, that was who he was, a guy that's just going to zero blitz with the game on the line, even when it makes no sense. So he deserves to get fired. The problem is, ha- how has the media just continued to ignore what Adam Gase is? What he's Adam Gase is done. Gase, Adam- n- not, just, not just over 28 games here, but over three years in Miami as well. All the same red flags that we talk about every single week. That, that's who he is over a longer sample. So how does that get ignored? 
prime time listen, I couldn't wait to hear you, hear you go over this this week, bro, because I've been saying the same thing. You know, he, he feels like a man because he fired Greg Williams. But, when you know, you want to hold Greg Williams accountable. But who's the fuck who, – who's held him accountable for all the mistakes he's made for the last – Two, two and a half, two and some odd years. It makes no sense, man. This guy is the worst I've ever heard. And this is the problem with it, man. He justifies his bullshit. You know what I'm saying? You basically said last week that you failed Sam, which, hey, we all knew this. Now, you know what I'm saying, you're saying you make, you know, you're making bad decisions. You want us to feel sorry. How can you feel sorry for a guy who can't coach? He never should have been hired in the first place because you watched what he did in Miami. And to want, you know, and, and to push the narrative that, this guy is the victim or this guy isn't the problem. I'm sorry, any Jeff fan that doesn't realize what's going on, you know, either either you, you're drinking the Kool-Aid that Tyson would say, or you're just dumb as shit. This is what it is. It's facts of what it is. No, but, it makes no logical he, sense. It, get, it gets even better, though. It's, it's a couple levels. For the Jets and the media to act like they did some power move by firing Greg Williams, the only thing you did was try to cover your ass for pure incompetence. But, the, but you're, what you're also doing is exposing your own incompetence because Adam Gates, like Primetime said, Adam Gates has made so many mistakes in game that we have mentioned endlessly that the media will never mention. So now all of a sudden you're going to sit here and scrutinize Greg Williams, break down the film and all these funny great red fucking lines and all these camera angles. All this, it's great. So you want to hold Greg Williams accountable. Week in and week out, Adam Gates makes mistakes that he's getting paid to not make. He's ruining the offense. It's the worst offensive football, and nobody takes time to analyze it. Game management, time management, roster management, putting Beckton back in the game when he was hurt, putting Sam back in the game when he was hurt, destroying all kinds of shit. We want to ignore all that and then give people credit for firing Greg Williams? Me break. Absolutely. Like the media's exposed, Jets leadership's exposed, ownership's exposed. You can just see how many frauds are truly out there right now. They're all frauds, dude. They're all fake. They're all phony. They don't know their ass from their elbow, and you can't buy it. You can't believe it. You can't buy it. It's a joke. This is what's been going on since from day one. You know, and, and it's, it's amazing to me how you, they're so, you're so quick to fire, you know. But Greg Williams, but he wanted to fire Greg Williams for a while. He didn't have a justified reason to do it. But yet, and still, he still has his job. He's, you know, he's he's the only person in that building who hasn't been held accountable for all the mistakes he's made. And he, how you know we, saying, how he's, we said it, dude. We said it. What did we say? The minute he questioned Gase's, Gase's uh, play calling in that Absolutely. game, was it three four weeks ago? The, yep. the clock was on. The, to, the clock was yep. ticking, and they were waiting for the moment to strike. That's all it is. That's all it was. And, and, and he knew what he was doing. And see, this is what he does. And, and this is why, you know, it's so asinine to even believe that this guy was ever qualified to be our coach. But, you know, that's, 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 that's gone and done now. But the problem is, and this is what I, I, I really hate, and I know primetime probably feel really the same way, what, he done, what he's done to Sam over the last two years has, has, has been a tragedy, man. You know, you've taken a really good kid who really had a chance of being a franchise quarterback to us having to – to, to grab a whole new quarterback because you've ruined this kid. You've ruined this kid's confidence, this kid's ability to grow, this kid's ability to understand. You, you know ruined the whole team, dude. Absolutely. But, they, but, they, but, they, but listen, we're, but it's a bigger picture. Like, I'm all about big pictures now because I, I think I'm just so – I'm so done with this shit. We all agree he's ruined Sam. The job that Adam Gase has done over the last two years put us in such a dire and desperate situation that we are going to be forced – Forced, I mean, we, obviously we got to get the number one pick. We're going to be forced to spend big time money on a coach. We have to. Do, this is like he's actually made our rebuild go backwards. He set us back even further. Not a, not just a quarterback position. Think about it, Tyrone. He's going to be gone. We got to get a new quarterback, a new offense. Or we got to. We have to have a whole new defense. We only have like three or four building blocks here. That's how bad this is here, and that's where he's put us. He set us back like two years with his bullshit. Now, you, you would also agree what? though that. It, it still presents the opportunity to springboard forward at a faster rate because of how bad he yes, actually sir. was. Getting yeah, the number one pick, that adds the ticket to a potential coach like Bill Cower. I mean, if you get the right coach and Trevor Lawrence is the real deal, on top of all the money you have, on top of the extra picks from you know Jamal and the Leonard Williams trades, you, you got something here. And that's what I, that's what I'm looking at too. I'm looking at the fact that you know, saying that if we if we if we get the first pick of the draft. You know, and I'm telling people this, man. It's not only about Trevor Lawrence. It's also the pick that we got from Seattle. It's also the first pick that was very coveted 
in the second round. It's also having the first pick in the third and the fourth and the fifth, being able to get quality players in quick, fast, and hurry and turn this thing around quickly. Plus having $90 million when the cap is going down, when a lot of teams that are over the cap are going to have to let good players go, so we're really be in position to, you know, I'm saying to really turn this thing around. But it all starts with a couple of things being done. First, Gates got to go. First, we have to hire the right coach to come in here and be able to deal with this debacle. And also, it's making the right decision uh, at quarterback, you know, if it's Trevor Lawrence, if it's Sam, whatever they decide to do, you know what I'm saying? All the decisions that have to be made in the management is what scares me the most is because they, they have allowed this. I mean, listen, I understand you don't want to pay the man. Pay, why, why would you keep this man when you realize what he did last year? Last year should have been enough for you. But, okay, you know what I'm saying? He stretched Sam out, and we went 6-2 six, six and two over the stretch. And yet, and still, yeah, we started off Williams. going – Exactly. And then we started out this season 0-7. But yet and still, you got rid of Jamal. You lost C.J. Mosley. And then you ran one of the best running backs in the league out, out, the, out the door. Then on top of that, you didn't fire your whack-ass offense, your line coach, because, listen, that's been the struggle. And then the line has played better. The line, you know, running behind Beckton, you know what I'm saying? This kid is just – this kid is going to be something special for us. But yet and still, we're still having the same mental breakdowns. We're still having the same kind of things going on. This is what happens when you have a coach like this who don't groom players. And I don't care what anyone says, man. People going after Jackson for what happened, you're a fucking idiot, bro. Number one, this kid is a rookie. And the, and the one thing I do love what Greg Williams did, he threw these kids out there, bro. You know what? That's not a form of incompetence. That's a form of trust. I trust my corner to make the right move. He just got beat by one of the fastest receivers. But yet and still, the him and Brace Hall, I like what I'm saying from these young kids, man. And anybody who doesn't understand that, bro, doesn't understand football, man. That's just dumb as shit, bro. Like, I'm so sick of these whack-ass fans making the same decisions every week, getting mad because the kid got beat. But half of you cowards weren't even – you weren't even good elementary school players. You know what I'm saying? You didn't even get to play. Yeah, y'all got participation trophies and shit. Man, it's bullshit, bro. Kids out there playing their heart out, bro. I love what Lamar, I see, my young guys. I love what I see. Lamar Jackson has something very similar in common with every single rookie on this roster right now, and that's that they're not actually making progress anymore. Even Beckton, I mean, he, he's been hurt several times. You know, he got beat twice you know, on Sunday. I'm not saying that, you know, that's anything – you know, incredibly negative. You you expect that from a rookie. You know, that's going to happen. You know, Denzel Mims, he comes on the field. He's making plays his first couple of weeks. You're thinking, okay, he's got a nice seal in here, but we don't feature him. He gets three targets this Sunday. I mean, you, you look at P. Ryan, he's hurt now. Ashton Davis, he's hurt. Not really doing a whole lot. Duniga has been invisible. Uh, Braden Mann, I mean, his punting has kind of been average playing. lately. Exactly. So, I mean, what rookies are progressing or, you know, developing into something under this staff? Exactly. But see, Tom, Prime, you, just the, you, you, you just answered the question, Prime Tom. Who could develop under this staff, under this this the rest and this mismanagement and this this not being a, a really good coach making players better? But I will say this though, I like the young players playing though. You know what I'm saying? Getting these guys real live reps. You know what I'm saying? Like Mims. I'm sorry, man. If you don't use Mims on a 10-yard slant, bro, this kid is a straight monster, bro. Why aren't they, why aren't they using him that way? But I did, I did like seeing Ty Johnson and, and Tyson's favorite guy <laughs> run the ball, and the guys did really well. And, you know, even though Beckton got beat That's twice, though, prime time, right? if you – if you we – prime time, how do you do that to play, right? Tyrone, you know we're set at running back now, right? We're good to go. We don't, we don't need anything. We're, we're good to go at running back, man. Oh, you know, <laughs> we're set prime time. We are set. Ty yeah, Johnson, take... Michael P. Ryan, Josh Adams, three-headed monster, baby. Hey. Come get them. Hey, hey, Tyson, prime time. Let me tell you this though. I know Beckton got beat, got beat pretty bad, but yo, running on that left side, bro. Yo, they just look ferocious. Oh yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you know, Elf they just look well ferocious. Too, though, man. Yes, I give him credit. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, they they're improving. I mean, I'm where where you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned. I'm more concerned with the injuries. Beckton's going to be a phenomenal player if he's healthy. I'm more concerned with the injuries with him. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, that comes to territory, man. But like, and Brayton, man, I'm sorry, man. You're not going to talk about my punter, Tyson. You know why? Because my punter's been he's been overly used, man. That's the problem, man. He probably kicked uh, twice with any other punter in the league. That's kicked, the worst so far fucking man, I've bro. ever heard. <laughs> Tired leg. I'm just saying. Hey, ty, exactly. Tired legs. Is it, you know what, Tyrone? You know what? With a comment like that, we're going to the callers because you're just going. You started out strong. And you start 
When you start breaking out Steve-like shit, I'm going to the callers. So we're going to Mike in College Park. Mike, what's up, man? What's hey, up, Mike? what's going on, guys? How are we doing tonight? How you doing, bro? What's up, dude? It's good. Thanks for having me. Listen, Tyrone, I told you last week, don't underestimate the dysfunction of this organization. We could easily end up with that number two pick, and it's something we got to be thinking about. <laughs> hey, listen, bro, I was so scared, bro, during that moment, bro. I almost cried, bro. Shit, dead ass. So, uh, yo, listen, I'm yeah. so – hey, it, 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 to me, if we get the second pick of the draft, all this shit would be for nothing. So, I mean, I know it is what it is, but, man, I was, listen, I was rooting for – I'm watching the Jets game, and I got a Jacksonville game on the other TV, bro, praying that they win. Pray, I said, yo, praying that they win. Yo, they just Same win here, yeah. I think, yeah, I think all – I mean, many Jets fans, or the real Jets fans, were the one that's rooting. But I think, listen, as much as we love the fact that the Jets lost and, you know, it's putting us one step closer to that number one pick, I think a lot of people are overlooking something, and I think that's the morale of the players. I mean – at the end of the day, we're fans. We might be diehard. We bleed green, but this isn't our career, you know. We're happy they lost, but the players are pissed. I mean, you look at the stars on the team, Marcus May calling out the coach, Quinn and Williams tweeting, tweeting stuff like that. I mean, these guys have been tired of losing, and they wanted to win that game so, so badly. And so, listen, obviously they had to fire Williams because – whether it was his call or Joe, or Joe Douglas' call, if players are going to get the sense that we're being sent out there to lose games, then they'll just demand to be traded or signed somewhere else. So, listen, I'm happy we lost because I'm an actual Jets fan, but, that you know, that wants us to succeed. But I'm just worried that the locker room is going to start falling apart and we're going to lose the only talent we have left. That's the only thing that I'm well, worried but, about. Yeah, but, but the only well, thing with that, yeah. th- there's, it's actually a good thing. The Greg Williams being fired is going to suck the life out of the locker room. So our four more losses – are on their way. That, that, that's a good thing, in my opinion. About, about players not wanting to be here, most of them aren't going to be here anyway because they're on one-year deals or, they, or we don't want them to come back. So I'm not worried about that. And then if you hire the right coach, all of this stench goes away. I mean, it, it, it'll, be, it'll be fine, man. Like, I'm not even worried about any of that. Like, let the locker room be defeated. Let them all give up. Let them quit. Let's lose four more games. And then we can, we can recover from that in the offseason with the right coach, the right, the right mindset, the right leadership, and everything else. Well, listen, good players, just star players, they have a much lower tolerance for just losing. You look at Le'Veon, you look at Jamal. I mean, I, I can see Quinn and Williams, you know, Crowder, all nah. these guys, Marcus May. If, if this shit show repeats again, if we end up getting Trevor or whoever and this goes and, you know, we just repeat that cycle, then we start all over again losing the only pieces that we have left. Yeah, but the, but the only pieces happened? that you're really worried about, but you're worried about Beckton, you're worried about Mims, you're worried about Quinn and Williams. Say, say you go out and hire the enemy or you hire Bill Cowher, whatever. Day one, you sit them down, you talk to them, you sell them your plan, and everybody's back. Everybody buys in, we all move on. One happy family. I don't think it's – I'm not – Tyron, what do you think? I'm not worried about that at all, dude. Let them nah, lose nah, every nah, game, and, and, and that's it. And, and me, me as well, man, I think you really got a good point. I understand where you're coming from, Carla, but at the same time, man, like you're going to bring in a whole new – New, a whole new regime. You have to understand, man. It, it's everyone. It, the writing's on the wall. Everyone understands what's going on, and nobody wants to lose. I mean, I understand these guys are professional, and it, it's a it's a form of pride now. But it's also a form of, you know, what I'm saying we're going to get we're going to get better quick. You know what I'm saying? So it's not going to be another 0 16 season next year. It's going to they're going to get they're going to get really be, they're going to get better really really fast. And I think these guys are buy in. I mean, all these guys are young, man. You know they they they're, they're young and they're, they're striving to get better. But nobody wants to win. Jamal had a whole different agenda. He had a whole different plan. And, you know that's what that was. And he understood what was coming as well. Le'Veon as well. So I mean, the older guys, you know what I'm saying? They the older guys are not going to be there next year. They are all most of them guys on one year contracts. So the rookies are the ones that 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 are the taste in the mouth, but losing like this, man, is definitely going to leave a sour taste in your mouth, man, so don't don't, don't worry about that, bro. That, that right there, Quentin Williams, Becton, Mims, and guys are going to be just fine with a new coach. You know why? Because they'll see what winning football is about or having someone in that has that understands football and, and is a player coach. You have somebody like in the, the enemy come in or you have whoever you want to bring in. You know, you're going to have somebody of, of quality value because you can't bring somebody in that's not going to be able to handle what Gates screwed up. I mean, he screwed up a whole a whole locker room. So now you have to rebuild your whole locker room and get the kind of right kind of guys in. But also, too, man, next year we're going to have an influx of talent coming in, too. That's that's a problem with a lot of stuff, too. You don't, you don't have talent in key spots, and that's the biggest issue. 
Yeah, definitely. You think I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I was going to say, I, th- I think the proof is just in what happened last year. I mean, did any of those six games that we won down the stretch, did they carry over into this year as far as good morale or anything like that? No. And then, you know, you go back, you know, a couple decades after a co-tight with the 1-15 year, Bill Parcells was able to come in with a lot of the same players who were kind of re-motivated, re- you know, rejuvenated, having a, a true leader as their head coach. And they won, what, what was it, eight games, nine games that first year? And they had a quick turnaround. So you hire the right coach, you get the right quarterback, it, it can change pretty quick. So I, I don't think, you know, winning or losing these last four games is really going to matter all that much. Mike, thanks for calling, yeah, man. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Hey, have a good night, night, Mike. Appreciate it, Mike. All right, we're going to go to Ivan. Ivan, what's up, man? What's going what's on, up, Ivan? Ivan? What's up, Tyson? What's up? How you doing, Tyson? What's up, man? What's going on, bro? How you doing? Well, I mean, it was a crazy, uh, crazy, crazy game yesterday or two days ago, and uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I called it. This to me was our trap game in the remaining four or five games or whatever. Because when you think about it, every time the Jets go to Oakland or sorry, not Oakland, to the West Coast, to the Las Vegas, wherever, they always play like shit and vice versa. Whenever the Raiders come to to New York, like we always fucking kick their ass, as evidenced by last year. So it was definitely uh, way closer than I wanted it to be. But hey, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a loss, so I'll take it. And uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it's, I, I think this whole, this week in particular showed the media showed uh, revealed their true colors. They can't really hide anymore. That they really they're not about holding the team accountable. They're just what they're just trying to get their clicks or whatever. Like the fact that you go all you have so much that people had so much emotion, so much vitriol towards towards Greg Williams, which I understand. Listen, I understand from from that side. But if you're gonna do that to him and not to Adam Gase, the double standard is very obvious there. So I mean, if anything, this was just like a mask off moment for them. Um. And then in terms of like the head coach or whatever, I like listen. I think that uh, I think that we should have like a not a not a coordinator necessarily, but I think we should, it should be like a head coach, either like a previous head coach or a coach from a college team, a team that someone that's built a, a team from the bottom because that's what we need. We need we completely need a over overhaul in culture, and uh, it's not just we need like if you think about it, like some of the big some of the best coaches right now, like John Harbaugh, not John Harbaugh right now, but like in the past, he was a special teams coach or whatever, Joe Judge now, he was also a special teams coach. So I feel like the people that just, like, kind of oversee everything, kind of like what Tyson was saying with, like, a CEO type, you know, obviously there's no Bill Parcells now, but I don't know who that would be. Maybe I, I personally like Matt Campbell from Iowa State. I don't know how realistic he is, but I think he, like, I understand, like, Joe Brady is, like, the hot name right now, but uh, but it, and, and not that I would be opposed to necessarily, but if I think we need, like, a overseer more so than a specific uh, coordinator one way or the sure. other. So, Ivan, here's the question for you, though, and I completely agree with you. The more I think about it, I'm, I'm all about having a, a head coach be our head coach. I'm all on the, to be honest with you, I'm all on the Bill Cower train. I'm, I'm all about that. But if you have Matt Campbell, and Matt Campbell, Matt Campbell says, I'll come here, but I want the same exact contract Matt Rule gave, got, or more, do you give it to him? I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. You have to because, again, look at the success that Matt Rule is having with with Teddy Bridgewater and uh, and a guy in the XFL playing quarterback for a game or two, like the 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 progress there is undeniable. Okay, and that's what you want to see, especially in this first few years of progress. And if and I'm willing to put, I will, I'm willing to hedge my bet with a uh, Matt Campbell type player. And when he has his his quarterback, which most likely will be Trevor Lawrence, God forbid, something crazy happens in these next four weeks. Like if you're the Johnsons, you have to do it. If they're gonna do it, that's like another whole situation because again, we know how how stupid these 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 people are with their money. And, uh, I mean, I, th- I think you have to do it. Well, I think the most important thing is when you when it comes to hiring a coach, man, you know, we need something we haven't had in a long time, man. You need a, you need a leader of men. And, and that, that should be the main category we're looking for a head coach. You need a leader of men. We haven't had that, you know, pretty much since Rex Ryan. And that's the, that's the scary thing about uh, picking on Nick's head coach because you have to find somebody that can ha- handle every aspect of it and fix this broken train. This this has been broken to fi- this has been broken for so long. It's going to be difficult to fix. What do you think, Prime Time? What we'll do is I, I, I agree with you, man. So he's he's actually screaming. Our phone calls are just jammed right now. So I completely agree with you, man. Ivan, thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Right, have, a good have a good night, Good night. Yeah, we're going to try our best to get a lot of people on as fast as we possibly can. The phone lines are jammed. We have a guest joining us at 832. So we're going to go to Luke in New Jersey. Luke, what's up, man? What's going on, Luke? How's it going, guys? I'm pretty good. How you doing, bro? 
I'm doing well. Uh, I'm not that nervous because I really thought this was the last game I was scheduled that we had a, an actual chance to win. But, you know, we got Seattle, Los Angeles, a really good Cleveland Browns team, and a Patriots team that's in playoff contention. So I think I think we're safe. And and to the people who are like, in the event that we don't get Trevor Lawrence, that we get the number two overall pick, we have the best consolation prize, like probably like in, in the history of man. Because like in most years, Justin Fields is probably the number one pick. So I don't mind that, but, you know, it's what it is. Well, you know, Luke, you're you're bold for saying that, man, because I'm not really that same believer that you are. I mean, Seattle and the Jets are flying back and then going back out to the West Coast gives me some hope they can lose both those games. What I worry about for, like, a team like the Browns is the Jets will now be a trap game. And if the Browns clinch a playoff spot, then what happens? Like, I worry about all those scenarios. The Patriots are still in the hunt right now. And the only, the only I guess, positive that I'm looking at is that Mike Glennon is playing very well for the Jaguars. The Jaguars should have beat the Vikings. So I really want to see them get a win. So if we happen to sneak a win out, we get through. But I don't feel comfortable. Dude, I'm not comfortable at all. Every week is going to be a nail-biter for me. I mean, what do you think, Tyrone? The, the Jaguars face the Bears, hey. too. They, they, they yep. face the Bears, and they face the Colts team that might be resting their stars week 17. So who knows? Let me give them Hey, man, week. listen. Hey, Tyson, I feel the same way you feel, man. Like, I've been looking at Jacksonville's schedule. Their next two games are damn near impossible. So, um, it's a little scary for us, man. I mean, I, I know this sounds so crazy that we're sitting here talking about hoping for the Jets' losses, man, counting losses. But at the end of the day, everyone that really understands what's going on realizes how important it is for us to get the first pick in the draft. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know what? I mean, I'm not as high on uh, as on Justin as everyone else is. But like I said, man, you know, if it's a possibility that we get him and get the right coach that can work with him, I mean, I'm all for it. You got man, bro. Listen, dude. Tyrone. By the way, we got to get you on YouTube, dude, because you got absolutely scorched for that take. I mean, scorched where they're like, we want Tyrone on immediately. We want Tyrone on. I'm like, we'll get him on. But you got scorched for that take with Trevor Abus, dude. You got hey, some, you got some mean, answer to do. Hey, look, man, it is what it is. I mean, listen, I want Trevor. Why Why? Why is the problem? Like, you know what I'm saying? He's, the be- he's probably the best problem. No, but, no, but we're, listen, we're all with you. But when you said – if the Jets don't get Trevor, we're screwed, everything's over, and we're all doomed, that didn't go over too well, man. We had, we, Kevin hey. and I had to do your dirty work and try to defend you and say, no, no, hey, he's man, a very I emotional pre- guy and all this you, shit. Man. I mean, that gave me an opportunity <laughs> to defend Sam one last time, but yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you know, listen, that comes with the territory, man. Listen, when you start getting the kind of views we're getting on the shows, bro, it is. Hollywood. It is. I take all the smoke. Hey, man, you, listen. You, you cradle hey, smoke right now. Hey, listen, man. I take it all, man. I don't give a fuck. It is what it is. Come for me. Prime, prime, time, and our, prime time and listen, prime time and I are trying to make friends here, keep everybody happy, keep everything calm, and you just come in with your blowtorch and your flamethrower, and you scorch everything and get to deal with the <laughs> aftermath of it. Hey, listen, man. Sometimes, hey, look, look. Sometimes you got to burn the building down, baby, and start over from scratch. We about to do that this off season, man. So I'm sorry if everyone feels that way, man, but that's how I feel, man. I think Trevor Lawrence will be great for this team, the same way I thought Sam was too. But I, I think we're in a better position. We're having a better gym, having a lot of cap money, and really being able to build this thing up quickly. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I'm tired of a fucking ten year rebuild. I'm tired of every year we getting hope. Yeah, but we're talking about draft shows. So wait. So wait, let Luke. Luke, so your your opinion on Fields is he's a franchise quarterback, and you'd feel comfortable at number two taking him. I mean, like obviously you want Trevor Lawrence, you know. I mean, but like if, if he's if Justin Fields is a consolation prize, then like sign me up, like right? I I, I can't be crazy, right? Like I, I know. Like no, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. Number one with you. Yeah, but he needs to sit for a while. He's not going to be ready to come in and be able to take over sit the for team a while. Number right two pick, sit for a while. That's the problem, though. You, you're taking him at number two, and he's not really deserving the other number two in my eyes. I just don't think he'll be able to come in. I Ooh. think Trevor from day one. Trevor comes in from day one. He's a starter. Fields comes in, man. He's not going. You know, it, it's a. It's, you don't want to learn on the fly, bro. I don't want a quarterback to learn on the fly. You know what I'm saying? Especially when we don't what? know what we're going to have. So wait, you're no, gonna I don't take Fields at two. You're wait, wait. So you're gonna take Fields at two, and you're gonna sit him in a league where almost no. every quarterback is playing almost right away. I, I'm, I'm not taking. I'm not taking this is Fields some at two. Shit right here. I, I'm not taking Fields at two. 
if we don't get Trevor Lawrence, I'm taking that tackle, and then I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm still on Sam. But I'm gonna build around Sam. So I would do. Oh but my I'm not god. I'm not. Hey, Look, this one is prime, prime time. Prime hole. Prime time, prime well, no. Let, let, wait, let Luke. Let, let you're, Luke you're, on, you're, on you're on your own, dude. You're, you're on your own for this one. <laughs> let Luke like, hear his thoughts. Let Luke talk about Fields. I like. I want. I want yeah. Trevor Lawrence like as much as anyone. Like I'm not. I wouldn't take Fields over Lawrence. Like never. I'm just saying, if the Jets, you know, do a Jets thing and get the number two overall pick, I'm fine with taking Fields. Like, right? Like I, I can't be crazy. It's like. It's not that, but do you think crazy. is like, he ready to when, play? Is he ready to play right away? Or are you gonna buy into this? Are you gonna buy into this? Take your time approach that Tyrone's trying to give us. Well, um, again, the number two overall pick warrants a certain mutation. So yeah, you, you'd expect him to play right away. And I guess for the head coaching thing, I feel some guy, something you guys have hit on is the idea that our next head coach doesn't need to be an offensive coordinator, like. Look, look at Adam Gates. Look at Matt Nagy. How are those hirings going right now? Not so well. Let me ask you this, you know, though. CEO. Let me ask you this, though. Do, do you think that Fields is the quarterback that can just step right into any system, or does he need the, the right offensive coordinator or the right system to kind of work into? Uh, I, to be honest, I, re- I really don't know. I'm not an X's and, o guy, X's and O's guy. I'm just saying – like, would you guys take Fields at two? You know, if we were, if if we you know lost number one overall pick, would you guys take? Well, you're, talk, you're talking. To, you you're talking to two down? Sam Darnold supporters, though. So once you get the yeah. number two pick, they're going to trade the pick. Sam's the guy. Two more years. Well, hold on, hold on. I, I, I've, I've given up the battle. At, listen, I've given up the battle at number one overall. If you're there, you're taking Trevor Lawrence. I'm more curious to know if. The, the experts, the draft analysts out there, if they think that Fields could step right into any system where, you know, no matter who the head coach is, that's the guy that, you know, you, you can build your franchise around without any question. But why, so, why yeah, step into any system? Did, did, if, you have, if you have a player like Kyler Murray, you build your offense to Kyler Murray. If you have a player like Josh Allen, you build your offense to the strength of the quarterback. That's what true, real, competent organizations do. You don't force feed an yeah, offense I mean, to a quarterback. You say, listen, this is the guy, this is how we win with him, and we roll. But if but you, like look you, say, you hire Bill Cowher, he, Bill Cowher is going to make the decision as far as what quarterback he thinks he needs to to win. So if he thinks right. that his offense or whoever he hires to run his offense can succeed with Justin Fields, that would be fine. Wait, if, say, hold I have on, a question. Let, let me hold on. Let, let, hold on. Let me get something in real quick. Wait, 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 hold on. Hey, 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 Hollywood. Wait, Hollywood. Hold on. The, the caller just said, I have a question for you guys, and you just ran right over him. I thought you were the man of the people, man. Go let the guy talk hey. here because he's going to give you some heat. <laughs> no, no. Just my, my question was like, I, I know Tyson is um like you take Bill Carr in a heartbeat. I just wanted to know what your like what what uh prime time style what what prime time style was and and uh like what what were you guys thoughts on it? Because like he's in Tyson, you know. You've seen like these these TV guys like John Gruden and Mike Mayock as the general manager come out of retirement and whatsoever and have some like some yeah. form of success. How would, like, the, the biggest thing, think the biggest thing with Cower is, is just the instant credibility factor, and you know, the similar, exactly similar to how Parcells took over when this franchise was at its lowest with Cotite. That's exactly what we need right now. Somebody to just completely erase the stench of what Adam Gase has done over the last two years and bring some credibility back. And even you know, beyond Adam Gase, you know, McCagden, Idzik, this team's been a laughing stock for a decade now. So I, I think they need that prominent guy who gives you instant respect around the league. Well, no, I, I completely do. I completely agree. If, if, yeah, if you have a guy, if you have a guy like Eric the Enemy that comes in, Fields will be probably the perfect guy for him. But if, but if you have somebody that comes in like Kyle, he's not he's gonna he's not gonna want Fields. He probably want to keep Sam. That's my opinion. It depends on who the coach is. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to like you know Arizona hired Kingsbury because of Kyle Murray. That's why they hired Kingsbury. If not, they would have probably went in a different direction. It wasn't gonna take Kyle Murray. I so that's all I'm saying. So you get if you get a player that's, that's skilled in a certain aspect of, of why would you hire a coach that couldn't coach that guy? You know what I'm saying? The same way we had Sam Garner. Why do we hire a coach that can't fucking coach? It just makes sense to me. So, I mean, any coach well, I mean, is better that, than what we have right now. But that's part of the process, dude. I mean, when once this season's over and they fire this fraud, like, all right, who's the best coach available? Who are we going to get? When in their interviewing process, that coach has got to sell Joe Douglas, okay, listen, I'm going to come here. I'm going to give you this. 
And their first question would be, who do you want at quarterback? Hopefully number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, easy decision. If it's number two pick, he's got to come in and say, listen, either I want Fields, I want to build around Sam Darnold, I want to go the veteran route, maybe somebody's out there we don't know about. Like, that's all part of the process. But I think it's – I'm not worried about any of that, dude. Like, we had number two pick, I'm not even worried about it. I'd have faith in the right coach, the general manager, and we just roll. And if it's Fields – but the only thing is, if we take Fields, this kid can't play the first year, the whole goal of having a rookie, a hot, you know, hot shot rookie quarterback is playing on the rookie contract. I don't want to wait a year to see him play. That'd be just like – I don't know, man. That that would drive me pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, I text, now you now listen. You know, everybody, 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 we all have valid points. So uh, it just depends on who the, who the coach is and what pick that we have. You know what I'm saying? Now you're uh, friends you know, with everybody again. Here we go again. Now Tyrone's nah, all friends with nah. everybody again. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> listen, man. Hey, look. I want to say this. No, when prime time said, when prime time says, yo, we have the first pick of the draft. And he'll take Trevor Lawrence, bro. That shit speaks volumes to me. I'm like, you know, I was almost, almost, almost fell out the seat, bro. I was speechless for a moment. But everybody wants to win. Nobody wants us to lose. Nobody wants us to continue to make kind of the mistakes we've made for years and years and years. That's the point of what this is. Everyone wants to move forward and win, you know. And I, you know, and I hope I don't get get confused or anybody think that I'm just being an ass. I'm just being honest, man. I'm tired. Well, we of always think that, man. I mean, we just see, you I know, when you just start. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man. Hey, let me explain something to you, right? Oh, hey, here wolf, we go. Hey, hey, a wolf don't worry about about sheep, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, Are you bringing wolf, out cli- you bringing out cliches now? We're gonna do hey, listen, we're gonna do cliches now on this show. And that is the point we got to. A wolf don't worry about the pig and the sheep, baby. Let's keep it. Busy. I blame Adam Gates right, for this. Sir? Now we're talking about freaking <laughs> cliches on this show. I blame Gates. Luke, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> Hey, have a good right, night. Have a good night, guys. Good night. All right, so we're going to get to something up, ten sorry. times. We're going to get to something ten times more important than this football team. As everybody knows, the holiday season's right around the corner, and every year, you know, the Jersey City Fire Department does something really awesome with the Captain Mark Lee Christmas Drive. So we're going to have on Mark Lee. Come on, join us, Mark. What's up, man? Tyson, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Hey, what's Dude, going on, Mark? Thank, you thank you for joining us, man. I know you're busy as hell, so yeah. we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Uh, anything for you guys. So, Mark, before we well, – let's go into the – we'll go into the, the nice part of the conversation first. So, let's go into the Christmas yeah, drive. Yeah, let's, let's start, Give let's us start the background with the good on, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the background on the uh, Captain Mark Lee Christmas drive. Yeah, so this uh, this drive, my father started back in 1985 with a couple of our local, um, you know, families in the neighborhood that were in need for, uh, you know, a little Christmas spirit, and we used to drop off toys. And uh, the year that he passed in 2014, uh, it grew to about 2,500 kids. Uh, ever since then, me and my mom took the drive over. Last year, we did close to 8,000. So uh, the drive is, you know, growing and growing. And uh, here we are in Jersey City, and, you know, it's another year. So here we go. No, nah, man, and it's so awesome. Now, what are some of the, some of the stories, man? You said it's a bunch of pictures, which we're going to share all over social media, but what are some of the, the stories you can share with our listeners about how you're giving back, the reactions from the kids and everything else? Yeah, so, um, you know, here in Jersey City, I'm part of the fire department, and, uh, and I don't know if I mentioned that before, but that's the drive that we run. And, um, you know, we do uh, Toys for Tots, you know, Boys and Girls Club, different community outreach centers for some of these kids. And, uh, you know, the memories that you have is when you come in there with, you know, the Santa Claus and the toys and, you know, a lot of these kids have absolutely nothing, you know, uh, barely, you know, afford clothes on their backs. And you walk in here with the toys, them thinking they're not going to have a Christmas, and, uh, you know, you provide a Christmas for them. It's, uh, it's unbelievable to see, and uh, I'm happy to run it, and uh, I'm glad you guys and, and many other outreach programs support it. And uh, Jersey City Fire Department, especially, these guys are great, man, every year. So what is the best way for everybody to get involved? How can people donate? How can people support it, promote it, and everything else? Yeah, so, you know, if you live in Jersey City or you're in the area, if you have any toys, uh, stop in, drop them off in any of the firehouses. You know, they'll know where to get them to. Uh, any monetary donations you can uh, send to uh, our fire headquarters at uh, 365 or 465, I'm sorry, 465 Marin Boulevard in Jersey City. That's uh, 07304. Um, and uh, they'll know who to, who to reach. I also have a, um, a – I partnered with uh, DonateAToy.org and Toys for Tots. I have the, the link on my Facebook page. It's Mark underscore Vincent 10. 
And uh, same thing on my Instagram. You can uh, go on and click that link. You hit donate. All the toys that get donated off that website, Toys for Tots will match. Toys for Tots will match uh, one for one. Awesome. No, you can't beat that, man. Yeah, no, you can't beat that. So we're going to make sure that we'll put that all over our social media. Please, everybody listening, especially on YouTube, everybody else, help donate. These guys do a phenomenal job, man. We see it. We'll share the pictures, you know, the experiences. Um, I mean, Mark, has there any been any moments that really touched you, man, where you're like, wow, this is some, like, just remarkable, like, you, you know, you give out. I, I think last you told us about when you're giving out bikes, but, like, can you share some of those stories, the more personal stories? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, friend of mine that you know frank yeager and a lot of these other guys they donate you know help donate and adopt families for the year you have your post your personal uh donations and families that you adopt for the year and uh some of these kids man like i said they have absolutely nothing so you go and knock on the door right around christmas time and uh some of the pictures that i sent you guys you, you, you you'll see when you know you share them and stuff um in, you know you pull up to the porch with the bike and these kids answer the door and stuff and just the reaction is priceless the smile is something that warms your spirit um and uh you know it's just something that i i, I enjoy doing year after year yeah no that, that's amazing man so we're definitely gonna share all that mark thank you for doing this we will do our best to promote as much no, as possible so now let's get to the I important, not the important updates. Well, let's get to the other side of the story and that is your diehard jets fan like all of us what was your reaction for Sunday, man? The highs, the lows, the loss, and everything else. Listen, Tyson, we talked about it before, man. I, I'm, a, I'm a winner. I'm a, I like to, you know, I understand, you know, what's at stake here with the number one pick if you lose, but I, I got a winner's mindset. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I want to, you know, you play to win the game. It, it's, a, it's a mindset that we, that we need. I, I feel bad for the players. I feel bad for guys like Frank Clore. You don't want to see Gore go out and maybe a possible his last year 0-16. You know, when, when you have the mindset and the mentality of a loser and you say, oh, I'm going to tank for this guy, I'm going to tank for that guy, you, you, the franchise is creating a mentality that I just can't support. You know, I just, I just, can't, I just can't get behind it personally. You know, if you're, rooting, if you're rooting for a tank, listen, it's one thing when we suck, which we do. And if you lose football games week after week and you wind up being the 0-16 team, that's fine. But if you're tanking and you're supporting the tank and you're looking for a certain player, that nothing is guaranteed in the NFL. Everyone's talking about this kid, Trevor Lawrence. Nothing is guaranteed. He could be the next Ryan Leaf. You don't know. He could be the next Todd Marinovich. You know, this golden boy that doesn't wind up panning out. Nobody knows. He could play one snap in the NFL and something terrible happened. I wish, you know, I never wished on anybody, but this could happen. So you're, you're rooting for a tank. And look, let's be honest. We haven't made a playoff appearance in 10 years. We've been tanking for 10 years. And where has it gotten us? You know where it's gotten us? 0-11, the worst franchise in history. That's where it's gotten us. And for me, yeah, but like, we, I don't know where. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but, but no, but listen, I, I completely respect where you're coming from. But for me, the culture, the mindset, all this stuff can be changed once you go 0-16, you fire the coach, and you start over. Like, don't you think, just, just for an example, say we go 0-16, you have at number one, you're going to have a chance to either draft Trevor Lawrence, trade the pick if you believe in Sam, but it also helps you lure in a prominent head coach like Bill Cowher or say maybe a Sean Payton or whatever else. That alone is worth it, man, where you can get that guy that comes in. Like you hire Bill Cowher or Sean Payton, just in theory, on day one, all the things you talked about is gone. Respected, we, we're respected. We have leadership. We have direction. Don't you think it's worth it just from that perspective? A hundred percent, especially from the coach's standpoint of view, because a guy like Bill Cowher comes in, he changes the, the mentality. And you know what that mentality is? It's a winner's mentality. It's not, you know, oh, we're going to lose or we're going to get a great, great draft pick that doesn't pan out like it's done for us year after year. All these picks that we had, Sam, a number, you know, that's, that's the thing. You have, oh, suck for Sam. Three years ago, everyone was saying, suck for Sam. You get Sam and look, it hasn't panned out. Now we're saying tank for Trevor. What's going to happen three years from now? We're we going to say blow for Billy. Like, I don't know where we're going with this. And at the end of the day, you know, Bill Cower, you know, he's a winner. I want a winner. And listen, if we get the number, like I said, if our team sucks and we wind up with the number one overall pick, who do you go with? Now, this is going to be a hot take for you guys. I actually uh -oh. like Fields better than Morris. Whoa, Whoa, why? Hey, well, I want. Yeah, hey, hey, I do. Why? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely want to hear why. <laughs> And I, I think that, listen, I think that um, 
one New York sports here. I, a kid like Trevor, I understand he's got all the talent. You know, he's doing a lot of things in college, and, and, and people are calling him the next, you know, Andrew Luck, et cetera, et cetera. I understand that. But like we talked about, nothing's guaranteed. I love if you watch two was it last week where you, you had Fields hand off the ball. He ran 60 yards, chased down the defender, and made a block right before his running back got caught for, for, caught for a, uh, you know, touchdown. You know, that, that's, just, that's just stuff that you can't teach. That's the intangibles that you don't see. I'm not saying that Trevor Lawrence doesn't have those intangibles. I think he does. But in New York, I could see a kid like Trevor Lawrence not panning out to be that way because, say, he does come in right away, and you know what, we don't have a winning season, and, you know, he might get eaten alive. Where a kid like Fields, I feel like he's a little bit more – He's a little bit tougher. He's a little tougher on the interior. I think he's going to take, be able to take a little more heat. And I think he can make things happen more as far with his legs and his arm. He's super accurate. And uh, I just love the kid's mentality. That's just my take, uh, well, personally. I, I, I want to say something to you, man. First of all, I want to, well, I I want to say it's a blue. I want to say it's a blessing what you do, and I'm sorry to hear about your father, man, but his memory lives on by what you guys do. And, um, you know, my lives, we do a lot of, lot of, when you do service, man, it makes you feel so good because it's not the point of what you give. It's the point of you, you're making the world a better place, and we need more of that. So, I mean, I commend everything that you and your family are doing, and please keep doing it. And everyone that's listening, please support. But, um, we, we, you know, it, it's not even about the tank for me. You know, we, we're talking about the uh, – you know, you said 10-year rebuild. We've been saying that forever. But I think if we go 0-16, we've reached the bottom, so we have no choice but to go back up. And, um, yeah, you know, I mean, way like – go ahead, brother. No, I said you're right, only one way up, right? You can't go any lower. Yeah, exactly. only one way up. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, and I don't want to get it confused, man. We know everyone everyone that's listening, man, we all Jet fans. We, we're on a Tuesday night, man, at, at 8.46 at night, and we're talking about the Jets. We all love this team. We love this organization. We love what it stands for. We love being a fan. But at the same time, it has to be a limit to where, you know, you can get a coach in like a coward that can come in here and turn this around. And it's the mentality, like you said earlier, is having the right kind of guy in here to, to get it done that, that's going to lead men. And that's what we haven't had in so long. And that's, you know, you go back to the Rex days. The one thing about Rex, you know, his Barado well, was something different, but what Rex did was he could lead men. He made them guys want to fight. That's why we went, went to New England and we won that game, you know what I'm saying? It meant so much because we were underdogs by, what, two touchdowns, and we came out there and won, you know what I'm saying? Can't stop a nosebleed. They're that type of mentality that these guys are going to run through a wall for you. These guys won't walk through a wet paper bag for Adam Gates. This is what happens when you hire coaches like this, and, you know, you had GMs, then we had Ty Bowles. You're not having leader of men. You have – Good people. I don't know them personally, but you don't have people who can lead men who who make guys motivated, and that's what we that's what we're lacking in this organization. You have a guy like Parcells or Herm Edwards. You have a Rex Ryan. These are these are leader of men. These are that can go into a room and command respect from day one. We haven't had that. And that's what we've been lacking so far. So going going zero and sixteen, it not only puts the Johnsons on aware that what what you're doing is not working, but it also puts every every fan and everyone else. You know, what I'm saying it's time to change this around. So your next coach is going to be the most important thing you do for this organization. This is going to find if you're going to sell this team or you're going to own this team because you know what I'm saying you can't keep giving a bad product and charge the same price that you charge. I agree, I, and I and like you said, Bill Cower and all those guys you name, they're players' coaches. Guys want to play for those guys. You know, a guy like Bill Cower comes in here, and he changes the culture for the, for the Jets. Guys want to come here and play for a guy like Bill Cower. He's a winner. He changes the whole mentality from the coaching staff down below to the players. And then guys are going to want to come here and play. Right now, I don't know, depending on who we get, a coach, whatever else, you know, some guys might not want to come here. I'll be honest with you. If I'm a, if I'm a player, say like an, a, a Robinson or any of these high-profile free agents, and say the New England Patriots offer me, say, $17.5 million and the Jets offer me eighteen point five or $18 million. I'll be honest, I might go play for the Patriots because at the end of the day, you know, I don't know if I want to come and play for a franchise like this that, one, doesn't support their players, and two, doesn't have a winning mentality. A lot of different pieces need to, to fill here and us for, to change this around. And I think it does, you're right, start with the number one pick if we do get it, and number two, the right coaching which Bill Cowher, I hope, is the guy, especially, you know, with the rumors and stuff like that and everything else. But do we need to go 0-16 to land a guy like Bill Cowher? <laughs> yeah, you probably, you, probably, but you, you, probably, you probably do, though, because if you have a job like San Diego, which is going to be a very marketable job, too, and you have Justin Herbert and all those playmakers, your selling point is, listen, yes, the Jets are a dumpster fire. We're the worst friggin' team in football. We have, we have a negative media, a negative fan base. We have all this shit going on around us. But that number one pick is a shiny little toy. We said, listen, man, 
you come here, we're going to let you choose your quarterback, arguably the hottest talent in the last 10 years. Like, it's kind of like you, we want to give them everything. It's a blank canvas, number one pick, $80 million in cap space, another first-round pick. You have all these things. It's all part of the selling point. So for me personally, I think that because if you start – say you have, like, the second or third pick, then it's a little bit tarnished. Then it's like, all right, do you want to – maybe he's not a believer in Justin Fields. He may want to be with Herbert or whatever else. He may want to go to Jacksonville then, go down to Jacksonville and, and coach Trevor Lawrence down there. So – for me, it's like I want to take away every option possible to make this the most marketable team where he's going to be like, you know what, it's a no-brainer. Let's go to Jets and just roll. You know, it's, but it's not going to be easy. Right, dude. Mark, you're completely right, dude. I, it's not going to be easy to turn this yeah. kid around. And, and like I said, nothing is guaranteed in the NFL. I mean, look at the draft when Sam went, right? That was a great quarterback draft. You know, you had Baker Mayfield went one. He looked like a number one quarterback last week or this past week here. But great. But at the end of the day, if you really look at the scheme of things, you know, you can make an argument for Josh Allen being one. You can make, you know, an argument right now for um, uh, what's it over in Baltimore there? Um, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, like he yeah. could have been. He could have went number one. He he had an MVP season his rookie season there. So, but you got to, you know, but brother, but brother, you got to look at you got to look at the teams they went to and the organizations and what they did. Having good coaches in place and being having good GMs in place, where they actually built around them. And in Baltimore, they changed their whole offensive mindset for Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen, they built around Josh Allen and made him a better quarterback. Even with Cleveland, Cleveland was smart enough to get rid of Freddie Kitchen and bring in a new coach. That's why they're having success now. We're the only listen, and we could have got rid of Adam Gates last year and bought someone in. I think we'd be in a better position than where we are right now. You know, but I, us I, being I the did, team that we I are. Did. You know, keep keeping the same guy. You know, well, listen, sometimes when it's broke, you, you shouldn't fix it. But when the shit is broke and you know you need to fix it, then you need to fix it and take that L. Cleveland, the fire coaches back to back, but they had to get it right. That, that, you know, that's what, that's what you know, and, and Cleveland's more, almost more dysfunctional than we are. But yet and still, even being dysfunctional, they realize when something's not working. And, um, you know, that's, that's the problem that I have, you know, that I'm more frustrated about is that we didn't get rid of Gates earlier because I thought that Sam – I really and I really thought that Sam could have been something good for us. But, you know, having someone like that I was, having I was Tabo. Sam, I was rooting for Sam as well. You know, I really do. Yes, I, do I think that Gates yeah, uh, – do Gates hurt his progression? I absolutely do. I think Gates hurt his progression. But let's be honest, you can only give Gates 50% of the, the fault here because when the ball is snapped – Sam has 100% of the decisions to make. And we've seen him time and time again not make great decisions with the football. Now that's just, that's just the player aspect of it. And a lot of people were giving excuses because he said, oh, his pieces were hurt. He didn't have, the, he didn't have Mims. He didn't have Perryman. He didn't have, then last few weeks he's been playing with those guys, and he still hasn't produced. So, you know, you've got you to look at it and say to yourself, like, hey, you know, when is enough enough? When do we move on here? I think Sam's a great kid. Uh, I, I wish things worked out for him, obviously, uh, from a franchise and a fan point of view, but they haven't. Now, a guy like, you know, Lamar Jackson or a Josh Allen, to say that if one of those guys came to the Jets, if he wasn't able to change the culture, we'll just never know. You know, I understand the pieces might be different, et cetera, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, look what they're doing, you know, now and what Sam's doing now. you got to go off of what's, what we see personally. And I understand it's different, lines, schemes, coaching, et cetera, but the talent, you know, with their legs and their arm. I mean, I think what Josh Allen was like 30, 32 for 40 with four touchdowns and 375 yards the other yesterday. I mean, come on. When have we ever seen that kind of performance from Sam? We haven't. You know why? Because he hasn't been on the field really. He, every all three of his seasons, he hasn't, he hasn't played all 16 games. That's another problem. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been, there's been a lot of, it's like, it's like you watch like a slow demise of Sam Darnley. It sucks to see. It's depressing. Now it's like, we're, we're all just ready to move on. And, and a change of scenery for him is probably the best thing. So, Mark, first of all, thank you very much for your time tonight. And one more time, please give out all the information for everybody can donate and give back and help you guys out. Guys, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for giving me the time, you know, to give my hot takes out there. I know uh, I'm one of the rare few that likes to win and understand what was at stake or whatever, but that's just the, the winner in me. And uh, one more time for the Christmas drive, uh, it is uh, 465 Marin Boulevard in Jersey City, New Jersey, 07304, I believe. It might be 02. But um, any monetary donation you can send to Fire Headquarters, 
if you just happen to be driving by the area in Jersey City and you pick up a toy, you can drop it off at any of the firehouses in Jersey City. They'll know who to get it to. Um, I have a few locations on, on uh, the following week where I'm going to put on my uh, Mark Vincent Lee uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram where you, anybody who's in the area, if you want to come and support, you're more than welcome. Uh, we'll be out there from 10 a.m. to about 1 o'clock. So thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Mark, yeah, happy no holidays to your family, man. Definitely, definitely appreciate you yes, joining sir. us. Yes, sir. Keep doing what you're doing, Likewise. bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, guys. Happy nice holidays. Stuff, man. Go Jets. All right, you too, brother. Have a good night. <laughs> All right, so, again, if you're in the Jersey City uh, area, please, you know, these, these guys do a phenomenal job. We have them on every year. They're such – he's – Mark Lee's a very good guy, man. They do so much to get back to the community. They're helping out all, all the time. If you have toys, just drop it out for the firehouse, like you said, donations. Um, and we'll share a bunch of pictures. So he sent me all the pictures tonight. I just haven't gotten them up yet. And it's amazing, man. And the year, every year he shares stories with us and the reactions from the kids. And he's like, it just tears at your heartstrings because we're giving, you know, in theory so little, only a couple toys and a bike, which is not, you know, in this day and age, not really a lot. And these kids are so grateful and so happy and so excited about it. So it's like, if you can do anything, please help out. We'll put this on Instagram. We'll put this all over, you know, Twitter and everything else. And we would definitely, definitely appreciate it. Yeah, amazing job, man, amazing job. You know, I, I really feel like Hollywood right now. Man. I've been listening to, to these guys calling in for years, man. And to be a part of it, bro, makes me feel good, bro. So, you know, please, if you guys can help and support, man, you know how important it is to, to be able to give a kid a toy. To, to, to be able to see that and, and experience that, man, you know. It, this pandemic can't stop love and it can't stop, you know, helping someone else and making this world well, that's, a better place. And that's, you know. and that's the thing right now, man. The thing right now is with the pandemic, a lot of people aren't gainfully employed. There's a lot of things. And the holidays, man, it's like, so, you know what, what may be, you know, 10, 20 bucks to us, something like that, that goes a long way for presents. That goes a long way for the community food bank. It goes a long way for so many places. So now's the time if we can help out our own, our own community, time to do it, man. We have to because there's, like I said, there's a lot of people, unemployment skyrocketing, all this shit going on. So, again, Jersey City Fire Department, we will make sure I'll get prime time. We'll post it all over the place you can get it. And I assure you that it goes to the kids. They, they're very transparent with everything they do, pictures. They film it. They have events. They have everything. So we definitely appreciate it. And now what we'll do is we'll go back to the busy phone lines. We apologize for a little – we're going to have a little bit of delays with just getting everybody on. But we're going to go to – Luca in Brooklyn. Luca, what's up? Look, what's going on, Luke? Luca. Luca. Oh, hey guys, how are you? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing fine. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna start up. <clears throat> start off with a bold take. Might offend Tyrone and Kevin. I do not want Sam Donald back next year whatsoever. Fair enough. What, what would you want in return for a trade? <laughs> I'm not second in the fifth. But what would what would be the what would be the least you would take in return for Sam Darnold? I honestly don't know because he's so damaged at this point. Like I know Tyrone was mentioning, like if you pick second overall, take a lineman or whatever he said, build around Sam. We had the time to build around Sam, and we didn't do that. And he's he's just too damaged at this point. Hey, look, and listen, I ain't gonna argue with you in that part, bro. Like I, I do feel, I do feel where you're coming from, man. Because I, I was leaning towards that the same way. Because just because the kid needs a new start, and we need one as well. But you think the damage is just him, or you think that this bad coaching is the reason why this kid is what he is? I mean, because I know at one point you saw the talent, the potential of this young man. You know, I mean, but you factor in having a bad coach and, you know, not having talent around him and being that bad. It's just really hard, man. So I I can't blame you for that one, bro. Not at all. I fought the good fight for as long as I could. But you know what? The the time has come. He has not done enough to essentially give you the opportunity to risk passing up a guy like Trevor Lawrence if you're in position to take him. And that's what it's about now. It's about being in position for the new head coach, allowing that guy to start fresh, with his own quarterback, which is what he's going to want to do. I mean, I would be open, again, to the possibility that a new coach would want to build around Sam, but that's, it's just not going to happen. You know, there, there's no coach that wants a reclamation project that's coming here. They're going to want to start fresh with a guy like Trevor Lawrence, and the opportunity to build around him with the amount of cap space that we have, plus the additional picks, it, it's too good of an, of an opportunity to pass up. 
Hey, look, I got a question for you then. So say say we mess around and win one, and we get the second pick in the draft. What are you doing? What are you doing then? I am taking the next best quarterback available in Justin Fields. No matter who it is, uh, you just want to say, oh, God, huh? look, and say, look, they don't. Well, well don't but do you, but wait, before you say that, though, do you have a, do you have a, a draft evaluation, what you think Fields brings to the table that Sam Darnold won't? I can't go on that length, but it's just a fresh start for everyone. Like, if you keep Darnold Anybody next but Sam. year, you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's just like, if you keep Sam, if you keep Sam for another year, and he plays like crap to start, and eventually he gets benched. You're setting yourself back another year, and you're going to be like, oh, crap, we just missed on a can't-miss prospect in Trevor Lawrence. Primetime, your thoughts? I mean, for, for a while, I was looking at it the other way, like, oh, man, you know, it, it, would be, it would be terrible to watch Sam go succeed somewhere else. But at this point, it's gotten to the extent where, you know what, that's what he needs. He needs to go somewhere else. He needs that fresh start. And we probably need that too. And more importantly, that's what the new head coach is going to want, his, his own guy to start fresh with. And then next subject of uh, topic, topic subject, I'm uh, like you guys, I am being ridiculed for wanting to tank. By a freak, by a, my brother who's a Giants fan and my, and my friend who's a uh, Steelers fan. Well, they can't – see, the thing is when – I don't like, – see, I don't worry about – I'm sorry, Tyrone. I don't worry about what opposing fans think because they don't live in our shoes. They don't deal with the bullshit we've dealt with for the last 10 years. So Thank I really don't you. care what opposing Thank fans you. think. They, they, have, they have no say. Like, unless you sit and Absolutely. watch with the shit we dealt with Bowles and McCagnin and Adam Gase and all this nonsense, like, they have no say. Like, you worry about your team, we'll worry about ours. We know what's best for today. We know what's best for tomorrow. What's best for today is to keep losing. What's best for tomorrow is 0-16 and, and Trevor Lawrence. That's it. Like, it's not – this is like – and I understand, like, I re- like, like, our last caller, I respect Mark so much. I've known him a long time. I understand, like, you want to have a winner mindset. That winner mindset will come with the next coach. That will come when you change your culture yeah. with the number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, and a new coach. That's how you change everything. So, yeah, I don't worry about opposing fans, man. And, and then it's like – they're like, oh, you like losing. No, I don't like losing, but I, I'm, rooting for what's be- I'm rooting for what's better for the franchise. One yep. loss each game – is one win towards the future. That's how I see it. Yep. No doubt, man. No, absolutely. that's absolutely right. Dude, absolutely, like losing, losing is actually winning at this point. So Luca, thanks for calling absolutely. it, man. We appreciate it. All right. Yeah, have a good Thank night, you. Good night. Good talking, man. All right. We're going to go to Angelo in Arizona. Angelo, what's up, man? Hey guys. What's going on, Angelo? Thanks for, what's going on, bro? Hey, Hey, thanks for taking my call today. Appreciate it. I know you guys are busy. Um, I have a couple topics I want to talk about today. Uh, first of all, the, the zero coverage, uh, Greg Williams. Um, it was, I, think, I thought it was a great game. I thought it was a good game. Jets were very competitive. Uh, I, I want to um, ensure that, you know, there, there's no uh, conspiracy theories here. The Jets aren't uh, actually tanking. It was just a bad call, just an aggressive uh, defensive call by Williams. That's his nature anyway. Uh, maybe even trying to show up Gruden a little bit uh, by by putting all that pressure on Carr, uh, but it backfired. So uh, we lost, and I'm fine with that. However, I, I want to talk about this, and I don't think it's getting enough talk, and that is everyone's bashing Gase, and I get it, and, and, and it's much deserved. But this team, this Jet team, has not given up. You know, we've watched these games. From, you from gotta Buffalo be kidding to the me. Raiders. I don't know. No, Tyson. I don't think they've given up. These guys are playing hard. The, the problem is there's just no talent on the field, and we've spoken about this before. But look at these guys play on the field. They're giving it their all. And I'm not sure that they should get every knock on the book. You know, remember, the last season for Ryan, Co-tight, you know, some of these other coaches in the past, you can tell that the team just totally gave up. And in this scenario, I don't think, at least from my perspective, I'm not sure if this team is giving up. I think they're trying to play hard every game, and I, I think they're trying to win at least the game not to go 0-16. Uh, yeah, so but is that, is that a by, is that, But hold on, but is that a byproduct of Adam Gase, or is that a byproduct of you have a ton of guys on one-year deals, you have a lot of young rookies that don't know any better. Are they, are they playing for Gase? Are they playing for themselves? I'm not necessarily sure. 
Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess you can give me some kind of credit because they're, they're, they're still fighting. I mean, what do you think, Tyrone? I mean, I think the same thing. I mean, I, I don't know if they're fighting. I mean, I just think that, you know, I mean, I think the guys, you know, they want to win. They, You know, they're professional athletes, so they don't want to lose. I don't think they're trying to tank. I think the fact of the matter is they're just losing games. I mean, yeah, you know, and that, that Oakland game, the guys are really, really into it. And, you know, and they fight every week. We just, you know, say it seems like we get overmatched at a certain point of every game, you know what I'm saying. But, yeah, you, you're, you're right to a point saying the guys are, are, keep, are, are fighting, but I don't think they're fighting for gates. <laughs> I think they're fighting because they're professional. They want to win at, at all costs. But at well, I, I day, never, day. I never said that they're fighting for gay. So I'll make that clear. I, I don't think they're fighting for the coach. I, I'm not even sure if they really like the coach. But my point to you guys is that if you watch the game, they're giving it their all. I mean, they're trying to be competitive. You know, most of these uh, these coaches that are, that know they're on their way out, the players just kind of give up. And these guys are not doing it. Tyson, to your point, yeah, you got a lot of rookies in there that want to show that they can do things. You got a couple guys like Henry Anderson, for example, you know, trying to fight for another team next year. Uh, I get that, but I, I really do feel that the Jets are giving giving it their best efforts. So I, I want to make that my first well, big point. Uh, but I think, uh, but I think that uh, how that'll be tested will be this week when you fire Greg Williams, a guy that the defense, all the defensive guys love. You fire him. If the well, that sucked the life out of the locker room. I think it personally does. I think this just. I mean, I know they hated his decision, his play call, but I think I don't know. What do you think? Does that think that bothers them at all, or no? Well, I, I think I, mean, I, don't know I, I think Willie. I'm sorry. Uh, I think Williams, when, when he was hired by the Jets, you know, uh, based <laughs> off uh, his last year with the Browns, uh, he brought in. Uh, credibility. He brought in aggressiveness. Uh, you know, uh, players were excited for this for this aggressive coach that has all this experience and and wanted to play for him. But they found out in time that that he was overly aggressive. That he wasn't as good of a defensive coach as he was made out to be. Uh, so so the players I, I I thought were were fine with him and wanted to play for him and have been playing all year for him. But him and Gates. Uh, just they they never were a good fit. You know, we we spoke about before with Isaac and Ryan not being a good fit. This wasn't a good fit either. You know, you got one guy on one side talking defense all day, and the other guy talking offense one day. Where's the middleman? Where's the coach to kind of bring them together? So that goes to my next point. Uh, you guys are talking about cower. You know, a 63 year old coach or ex coach that hasn't coached in the league for over 10 years, guys. You know, let's take one step back here. You got Boomer Science and putting out the, these rumors about Cower coming back, wants to coach for the Jets, you know, get a lot of CBS play, a lot of WFAN play, et cetera. I'm not sure if this guy's the right guy. I mean, this guy's kind of past his prime. He, he hasn't been on the field in 10 years. The real guy that yeah, we really still, should he, be talking but, but, about. But he's, still, but he's still actively involved in the game, week in and week out, studying film, still involved, still very relevant. I mean – Based on what he, 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 if he, if he, if he, if he, if he, if he leaves, if he leaves, this is his basically his dream job, being on TV, getting paid well, and he's had many opportunities to leave before. If he says, you know what, it's now my time to come back and commit to it and give it my best effort. A Hall of Fame coach is well respected all throughout the NFL. Like, how could you say that? I mean, it happened in the past. Dick Vermeil, John Gruden, all these guys. I mean, I can't discount that at all, man. I think it'd be a good thing. And not. And then he comes in. And he, he comes in. He comes in and so he comes in and solidifies the team. You know, he's not going to come in. With, you know, to, 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 you know, not be able to coach Ben. He'll be able to come in and demand respect because he's a winning coach. He, he comes from a winning organization and he know how to run a football team. That's the whole problem. You just said you just said it a moment ago. You said Gates and and, and, and Greg Williams were on two different accords. We didn't have. We don't have a head coach. We have an offensive coordinator. We had a def- we had a defense right. coordinator. We never had a That's coach. Right. That was that was the problem, yes, sir. But you got but you guys are talking about a coach that that hasn't been in the league for over ten years. I'm talking about bringing in a coach that that's helping build programs in Northwestern in Fitzgerald. That's a lot of talk that they you know people have been talking about online, and I think that's a great fit. That's a guy that that's still very young, and he's helped build programs. You know, Douglas is there for the Jets right now to build the Jets. You get a coach that can help build on the field as well, 
and be that middleman and be able to coach the team and get your defensive coordinator and get your offensive coordinator. Now that's a match. That's a good fit. How is Bill Coward not a match? How is Bill Coward not a match when you look at where we are now, rock bottom, where we have no no respect, no leadership, no credibility. You bring him in as the CEO of your team, and then you you let him hire offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator. Like that's how you that's how you rebuild. And you know you have to have faith that he has so many strong NFL connections where he brings them all in. Like how is that not a match? Those connections, Tyson. Of course I mean, he does. He dude, he, you, you, you think he's not I, sitting out in Oregon like, with you on playing that. with – you think he's out with – sitting in Oregon with cows, like watching him eat grass and stuff? He's very prevalent in the NFL still today. Tyson, he's on the show being an analyst with his $3,000 suit on that's making a couple of comments here and there, just like Gruden used to do. Gruden's been back with the Raiders for three, four years. Where, is they, where have they gotten? Nowhere. Where, where's, their, where's their championship? And where were the Raiders when Gruden went there? Rock bottom like the Jets are, right? Well, and now they're I, I back agree with to winning. So because he wears a $3,000 suit and sits in a studio, we're going to discount him when he's studying film, doing analysis, keeps very in track with the draft and everything else, we're going to discount him? I don't know. I'll, I'd, I'll I'd agree rather, disagree. I'd rather have the coach that's on the field coaching every day and seeing the players, evaluating the players on the field. I'd rather have that. And I don't, and I don't understand how Pat Fitzgerald's all of a sudden locked to be the savior of this team when he hasn't done the NFL level. So you're going to say, okay, hopefully his college, his college nuances work in the NFL when he comes into the New York market, which is bloodthirsty at this point, with the media and fans, something Bill Coward has no problem dealing with. You bring in a college coach here with his little oh shucks attitude and this and that. The, if he does not struggle, he'll get eaten alive in two years. So Bill Cowher won't do any of that. He'll have no problem dealing with the media or the fans here. It's a big job. It's a big undertaking to take here, man. And the other thing is with Pat Fitzgerald, if he says, okay, you know what, I'll come save your organization. Give me the Matt Rule contract. Are you doing that? Absolutely. I, I am doing that because I can see with Matt Rule what they're kind of getting things done, and they're doing it without a quarterback. So you can see that he's bringing some type of stability to the organization. I think this guy can too. And let me tell you this, Tyson, you got to remember, uh, at least from what I'm reading, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but they're saying that this guy turned down a lot of t- uh, job interviews in the past. There's been a lot of interest. Green Bay, for example, that's, that's want, that wanted this guy. So if you have a good organization like Green Bay, that's re- you know reaching out with the olive branch and saying hey you know we want to interview you we want to talk to you and this guy's saying no this guy's being picky and choosy because he knows that he has the goods he has the experience he well, Bill has Cowher's the doing the same to turn thing. around a program. Bill Cowher's been turning down jobs all the time. Listen, listen, I don't know enough about Pat Fitzgerald to say you know what I want to be the guy. I have researched Matt Campbell. I research other guys. I know all the the NFL coordinators. I mean Tyrone or Kevin, what do you guys think? Like I I get it. But to me, I'm not like I'm just I'm all in on Cower, dude. Like Kevin, Tyrone, you guys chime in, man. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. Just, again, just because of the instant credibility factor, like we keep talking about, I'm I'm not taking a chance on a first-time college head coach over a guy like a Bill Cower or if Sean Payton becomes available. Somebody like that that's won at the NFL level, that has a Super Bowl, that has experience building up a program, the CEO type. That is exactly what we need to get rid of the, the last two years of Gase and really the last 10 years of just awful football. You need somebody like that, somebody prominent. If, if that guy's available, he's your first choice. If nobody like that is available, okay, fine. You go to the, you know, Pat Fitzgerald's of the world, the Eric Bieniemy. but if you're prominent, proven guy is available, that's your first choice. Well, yeah, you yeah know, but I, I Kevin, kinda... uh, I'm sorry, Tyson, but I just want to make a comment to that. You guys have to remember when you're bringing someone in, let, let's say prominent, you know, you use the term prominent, and, and you got a Joe Douglas already in there, aren't you going to have a little bit of a power struggle? You know, the coach from Michigan, for example, that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of, you know, uh, pushback, you know, on, on the net, you know. Well, yeah, well, apparently, don't apparently want Cowher guy actually likes Joe cause, Douglas. Yeah. Cause any issues. Well, apparently Cowher likes Joe Douglas, so that shouldn't be an issue. And if Joe Douglas actually had an issue, you know, if he was the, the, the piece that's standing in the way of getting a Bill Cowher, sorry, Joe, you, you're out the door. <laughs> that, that guy at head coach is more important than Joe Douglas right now. If you, again, there, there are very few opportunities, like we had two decades ago with Bill Parcells, to kind of revamp your franchise like that. If the opportunity is there, you have to do it at all costs. 
All right, hey, and my last no point very scenario. quickly, guys. There, hold, hold on, hold on. There's no scenario. Bill Cowher wanted to come to the Jets. He wouldn't get that job. Like, there's no scenario where they wouldn't hire him, man. But go ahead. What's your question? Uh, my, my, last one, my last thing was, and thanks for giving me the time today, guys. Uh, uh, Tyson and Kevin, you guys had your uh, – you know your your little YouTube uh, streaming going on, and you guys, uh, Kevin, you were pretty adamant about uh, you know Jets getting a running back, and Tyson, you were talking about playmakers, and I just wanted to kind of give you my two cents. I kind of agree with both of you, but Tyson, I I, I certainly think you're you've got a little bit of an edge here. Jets are going to possibly get five, probably six, maybe even more uh, picks in the f- uh, first one hundred. You desperately, and now one of them could be a running back. I, I'm I'm sorry, Kevin. I understand your point, but I disagree with you because you need playmakers, right tackle, uh, maybe even a center, uh, uh, an edge rusher, uh, a CB. You need playmakers. You, you need guys with certain skill sets to the, help the team. Uh, listen, I, I'm not going to deny we have a a plethora of needs across both sides of the football. Here's the thing, though whether you're taking Trevor Lawrence or you're taking Justin Fields, whoever your quarterback is, let's not repeat the same mistakes that we did with Sam Darnold and that we've done with other quarterbacks like Mark Sanchez and not build around them. So like you said, yeah, right tackle, wide receiver, those are definite needs, but let's add a tight end. Let's add a running back. Use every, every asset you have, all your premium picks, whatever cap space, if you could sign an Allen Robinson, leave no stone unturned, make sure, guarantee success for your next quarterback in year one. If there's an injury, so what? You have you invested two picks at wide receiver within the first four rounds. You have a prominent running back to pair with P. Ryan. Every pick, every bit of cap space, I don't give a shit about the defense. Edge rusher, cornerback, that can wait another year. Build around your quarterback. Let's get this one right for a change. And that's why we got Joe Douglas to make those right decisions, to pick the right people, not just because we have the picks, but because he knows who he's choosing to play those positions. No, I agree. And, and again, like, look at Pat Mahomes. He, he's got a perfect offense around him, perfect head coach. They, they still invest in, in, a, in a running back in the first round in, uh, in Clyde edwards Hilaire. So the idea that running backs aren't important or that they can't help out your quarterback, it's just crazy to me. Well, I, I just wanted to make my point on that. I thought you guys had a good uh, one-two punch going on on, the, on YouTube there with your streaming live, and uh, just wanted to give you guys a compliment. Look, everybody, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Keep up the great work. It's a pleasure hearing you guys, uh, you know, on this show. Andrew, have a great night, man. Thank Thanks, you. Bro. Have a good night, okay, bro. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. All right, we will go back to the very busy phones. We apologize for the home, uh, whole times we had a, a guest tonight. And, again, we're going to tweet out the link. I just got to now. The Jersey City Fire Department, we're going to tweet out the link. If you can't listen, if, you don't, if you're unable to donate, we completely understand. If you own the toys, just help us promote it. Post the link on your social media. Post the pictures. Help us get the word out. That's just as good as donating. So we definitely appreciate it. We're going to go to Travis in Long Island. Travis, what's up, man? We're going to try. Travis, thank you so much for having me on. What's on your mind, man? Uh, first off, I just wanted to say the people that, because I know you and Prime were talking recently on YouTube about, you know, guys are saying, you know, shit about the language that's used on the YouTube channel, things of that nature. Please don't ever change a thing. The unfiltered approach that you guys bring to what you do is extremely refreshing. I wanted to also say I agree with Prime and Tyrone on Sam not being done. I mean, look at what Baker Mayfield's able to do with a competent coach. I don't believe Baker Mayfield's more talented than Sam. I will say, though, that a guy on a rookie contract is too valuable to pass up on a guy like Trevor Lawrence or even, say, a Justin Fields. Because if you look at what Seattle did with Russell Wilson, uh, even the teams that are contending this year, Josh Allen in Buffalo, Baker in Cleveland, when the guys are on a rookie contract, you can spend money in other places to make the team much better, much, much better around the guys so they can play better. So I think a guy on a rookie contract, you have to take it, whether it's Lawrence Fields, whatever it may be. Um, on, on the Bill Cowher thing, I just wanted to say that I, I was having a tough time with the Cowher thing when it first came out. You know, people saying, you know, he's too old. He doesn't deserve to be in the league because he's been out of it so long, whatever. I agree with you guys. The instant credibility that he brings trumps anything else anyone can bring. It allows us to get guys in free agency. It allows us to just have a little bit more respect around the league when it comes to acquiring um, coaches, things of that nature. 
I, I know Tyrone had spoke about, you know, certain guys, they need to be in a specific system. Kyler, you know, with Cliff, things of that nature. You got guys that it doesn't matter what the system is. I feel like Trevor Lawrence can play in any system and, and, and be absolutely fine. Andrew Luck, another guy like that. Literally, Trevor Lawrence is Justin Herbert on steroids. If we can get him and have power, I don't care what offense of coordinator they have or whatever because I feel he'll be able to perform well, and I know Cowher's going to have a phenomenal defense because he's gritty. That's what he was known for in Pittsburgh, and I just feel like what he brings from a CEO standpoint, like you guys said, is crucial for what the hell like we need to literally be coming back from, which is just a laughing stock of the league. Um, I, I do want your guys' opinion on that, you know, the, the value of a guy on a rookie contract. And let's say we don't get Cower, do we have to go with an offensive-minded guy, or does it matter at that point? Well, I want to say something real quick. I want to chime in on the Trevor Lawrence point. I mean, you're absolutely right. That's why I've been saying that, and I'm kind of clamoring for that. You know, listen, it took me a long time to get up the sand, band, sand bandwagon. I was drinking the Kool-Aid for a long time, but I just realized – What's more important for this team? And a lot like of you said, lots, Trevor, and lots of Kool Aid. Uh, absolutely, bro. <laughs> uh, almost, almost OD'd on the Kool Aid. But Trevor, but Trevor, like Trevor Lawrence can play in any system, and that's what I like about the kid. The kid can play in any system. So whatever coach actually gets this kid, you know what I'm saying, will be able to groom this kid and do what they want to do with this kid. You know, this kid has a cannon for arm. He's accurate. You know, and the kid can, like I said, he can run any offense. I think the other quarterbacks in the draft are kind of limited because they're not able to do everything that he can do, which means you have to cater to them. So. Um, also, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like you know, just having that kind of situation to where you're going to get somebody that that can actually come in and get it done. I, I don't think Sam is done, and I, I would never say that. I think Sam is done here because he's been he's been he's been mistreated and, mis, and misused. I think Trevor Trevor will come in with a new offensive line, more weapons, a new office, a new coach. You know that one that that's going to be solidified. You know that's going to be solid and give this kid the opportunity. I think Gates ruined ruined what Sam could have been. What do you think, Prime Time? Well, typically, yeah. I mean, I made the case for a very long time about building around a quarterback uh, on his rookie contract. It's such a valuable option to be able to have. You know, we've seen teams like uh, the Chiefs and the Eagles win Super Bowls while you know building around. Uh, you know, their rookie quarterbacks. Unfortunately, that mm-hmm. time is, you know, kind of coming to an end now with Sam Donald. You're in year three. Um, you know, the mm-hmm. Jets are in a little bit of a different situation, I think, just because they're not really paying anybody right now, um, nor do I know how much, you know, Joe Douglas is really going to want to in- invest in a ton of prominent free agents and build that way. So I think that situation's a little bit differently. But, yeah, uh, just the, the opportunity to start fresh with Trevor Lawrence and, and really for both parties, for Sam to start fresh somewhere else, you know, maybe even to sit a year behind, you know, a, a Roethlisberger or a Drew Brees or somebody like that. It, it's just in the best interest for both parties right now to move on. I still think Sam's going to be a good quarterback. I still think he has all the tools. I, I think I, I agree that he's more talented than, you know, a Baker Mayfield or somebody like that. I think his first year he was playing better than Josh Allen, but we just don't know how much damage has been done, whether or not he's mentally tough enough to you know, overcome what Gase has put in his head for 28 games. There, there's just too much risk trying to keep Sam and build around him at this point. Mm-hmm. No, I think honestly, just to add to that, you know, briefly, any quarterback taken from that class, would look like complete garbage in, in the situation that Sam's been in. They'd be saying Josh Allen's agree. the bus. Yep. You know, they wouldn't have been able to build around Lamar correctly. And Baker Mayfield already looked mediocre with a loaded Browns team until they got a coach that made Kirk Cousins look good. So, you know, I, I think anybody would have been a sinking ship. And just, to, you know, I know Tyson had mentioned he was getting a bunch of garbage uh, on Twitter and on social media platforms about you guys aren't real fans, blah, blah, whatever. Those people need to direct that anger towards ownership. They've taken us fans to a point where we actually have to root for losses. And that's not on us. That's on ownership. And it's sad that we're at this point. I've never rooted for losses. And I'm literally on the edge of my seat during that Raiders game saying, please, if there's a way, rugs breaks free. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm popping beers like I'm, like I'm shotgunning like you guys on live stream. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> no, and Tra- Travis, that, but Travis, that's an excellent point, and that's the whole thing. Like, listen, like, there is nothing worse than waking up on game day, hating the situation your team's in, and knowing that a loss, a fucking loss, is the best thing that you have right now. Like, you need it to see the light and, tell, and move forward. Like, we're not proud of it, but it's right. Ownership has put us here. Adam Gase has put us here. This is not our fault. It's their fault, and this is what we, what we are. Like, it's just – it is what it is at this point, and it's just – 
if fans can't see that, I just don't understand it, dude. I will never understand because this this win in December will come May when you're at the draft and you can't get Trevor Lawrence. You're going to hate life. Like, oh, what if? What if? No, we have right now the blueprint. Right now is four more losses. Four more losses. We get the Golden Goose. For now, that's it. It's simple as that. Cal was really interested in this situation, us trending towards the first pick. I think that just shows how well we're set up for the future because he's not the only guy that feels that way. If we can get the first pick with the amount of cap space that we have, with some of the young guys that we have that I think that could develop really well, like Mim, Becton, he's not the only guy that's interested. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Tyson. Most of the fans, they're delusional. Listen, I've never rooted for the team to lose, but I understand that we're going to have to go through some pain before we can get to the glory. And, you know, it's been a long time since I've been able to cheer. Last time was when we drafted Sam. Before that, it was during Sanchez. So we need something to cheer for. I I appreciate you guys having me on. I love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Can't wait till this upcoming Sunday. Travis, have a great night, man. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, bro. Yep, you too, guys. Appreciate you, Travis. Great call, man. And Travis made a hell of a point, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're really – if we get the first pick of the draft, we're really setting ourselves up. And one thing no one is talking about, man, the cap is going down. So, a lot of these – most of these teams, I think it's only going to be like four or five teams with, with cap money. You know what I'm saying? We'll be able to really, really set the market. I think the Saints are over like 40 million or some crazy number like that. Nuts, bro. Nuts. You know how many good players we're going to have to get rid of? Yeah, so the other thing is, we once again, we want to thank everybody that's been tuning in, you know, interacting with us, hitting us up on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, you know, especially YouTube with the live stream. We, we are so appreciative of everybody helping us out. And obviously our new format, I mean, Tyrone's become a superstar now. Like, we can all, we can, we can, we're at the verge now. We almost can't afford to keep him because he's just too big for us now. He's going to be on the bigger and better thing soon. So prime time, I think it's, we got to thank Tyrone for just actually taking this time to spend with us right now. Costs are adding up, man. I know. He's hey, man. This, this, ho- and all this, hey, this, this Hollywood, Tyson, Tyson, this Hollywood life is hey, something, man. Hey, yeah. hey, Tyson, all I'm going to say is this, bro. Just keep them <laughs> checks coming, baby. That's all you got to do. Keep them checks coming, man. I'll be here for you, baby. You're nothing but love, baby. See, see, nothing but, but, see, but, see, but see, Kevin, but see, Kevin this, is, this is the ultimate problem here. See, me and you are all about just working hard, being like trying to interact with the fans. You hear what Tyrone's first thing is? All about the checks. He truly is Hollywood, man. His true colors are just wow. shining See, through now. Hey, 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 proud, See? hey, proud time, proud time. <laughs> yeah, hey, up? listen, man. Yeah. I call, I call. Listen, even if the checks didn't clear, I'm gonna call in for you, bro. But Tyson, man, oh, you know what I'm saying? Man. Like, no, proud, proud time. He it's used like to that, call man? me, bro. He, he used to call me, bro. All I get, all I get from Tyson now, I, I get a random text. How you doing, bro? Like he don't even call no more, bro. Prime time, I get it. Yeah, prime time. You know, you know how you know how you know how Tyrone you know how Tyrone is rolling now. This is how Tyrone is rolling. I, for those of you on hold, I apologize. I gotta tell this story. We are busy as hell. We're doing all these different things, live streams, this that. I go out of my way to mail him two shirts that I made from our MMA company. Two nice shirts. Send them out. No charge. Hey man, you're my boy. I got you. Right? Do you think Hollywood had the time? They say, yo, bro. A text, a one-second test. Yo, bro, thanks. So I had a follow I'm like, yo, man, you get it? I'm, I'll make sure you didn't lose it like that. Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks. That's how Tyrone's wow. rolling out. This wow. Is, this, that's Wait, that, wait, wait, that's wait, how Hollywood wow. is. He had, Pro, he had no time. time for a thank you. I sent him, I sent him posters. Yo, I sent him posters. Yo, I sent no, him listen. shirts. That, that's I sent him all kinds know, of stuff. Wait, wait, when, listen, when, Tyson, listen, when, you, when you sent me that MMA shirt, I, I opened it. I was like, wow, what a gift. I put it on. I took the picture. I posted it to Instagram. I posted it to Twitter. I was so proud of it. I was, I was so appreciative yep. that you, know, you, you took the time out of your day to send me something. Yep. And all you got was just a, a thank you, just a hey. thanks. And hey, you hey, right you know what, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wow. Hold on. You know what? Number one, prime <laughs> wow. time now. Hollywood. I'm not letting them get away with. I'm not letting them get away with that bullshit. Hollywood. Right Let me explain. Prime time. Listen. Number one. Even, even Shaq sent me, you know, a long message. You know, thank you yeah. guys. You guys are family now. You know, we appreciate the wow. shirt. Yeah. Wow. All right, so we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to Frank in Florida. And you gonna just Frank, change, what's up, man? You gonna just change the subject? Yo, <laughs> what's the, the price went what's up, up for Nick Frank? Show. Fuck that. What up, Frank? Oh, like hey, Tyrone Phoenix. <laughs> Yo, thank you, Frank. Listen, man. You know, Tyrone, damn, go on your ram, bro. Like that. Yo, you know, damn.
understand why that wasn't like that, Tyson, man. But anyway, Frank, I know you've been waiting long, bro. How you feeling, bro? What's going on, man? Hey, I'll tell you this, bro. I felt like we won a Super Bowl on Sunday, man. I was fucking (laughs) nervous as a motherfucker (laughs) in that final drive. Thank God for Derek Carr. And, look, Greg Williams always have a spot in my heart for having that cover zero and and Carr throwing that beautiful ball over to Henry Ruggs for that touchdown. Because, dude, shame on every Jet fan that didn't want us to lose. Be- I mean, th- th- yeah, they didn't want us to lose because, look, it don't mean a damn thing. If we're 0-16, 1-15, or 2-14, and it's all the same, bro. We're a garbage-ass organization. Now, what that first I, overall pick going to do is – not only actually rooting for the win. You, you missed out on a great moment. You were rooting for the win? I was no. Hey, yourself. I felt like we won a Super Bowl, man, on Sunday, bro. Same, dude. Hey, so what's that, that first, first pick, overall man? pick – Go ahead, Tyrone. Nah, I said no, bro. What you nah, finish your point? What you, what you gonna do with the first pick? No, nah, look, that first overall pick. The reason why it's so valuable is is that look, Bill Cowher is not gonna come out for Justin Fields or <laughs> Sam Darnold. He's gonna come out for Trevor Lawrence. That's really the bottom line. That first overall pick is everything. We have to get it. We have to do whatever it takes to get it. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The next couple of weeks. There's some games where I think the Jets are going to be somewhat competitive because I think against Seattle, I don't know if you guys have seen Seattle as of late. They have not looked right at all, bro. Their defense is atrocious. I can see Darnold having his best game on Sunday. Not only that, Gase is going to be super motivated because he just let Greg Williams go, and he wants to show the world that Greg Williams was really the problem. And I can see yeah, the Jets having a real yeah, close they, game. Wait, but you wait, hold on. I, see, I, I think the complete opposite. I think it's a West Coast game. Seattle's going to be chomping at the bit. The Jets always play like shit in the West Coast. And I think they're going to be demoralized, dude. A loss like that just sucks the life out of you. You fired a popular, prominent coach in a locker room. Uh, dude, I think at some point they just start mailing it in. Uh, for me, it's this week. And then you look at some of the injuries. Van Roten's out. Ashton Davis is out. I mean, I don't know. I, like, I mean, primetime, what do you think? Like, I don't see a big-time effort this Sunday for some reason. I think they're going to get the doors blown off. I mean, I, I think they're going to be demoralized, but, you know, just to kind of, you know, touch on what we were saying before, there's still a lot of young guys there that really just don't know any better. And a lot of guys that are still, you know, looking at free agency in a couple of weeks that, you know, are probably trying to put on some good film and, you know, earn their next contract. So I don't think you're going to see any quit in these guys, but there, there's definitely going to be, um, you know, some level of just guys that are demoralized, especially the veterans who, you know, actually wanted to win that game last week that felt that they were in position to win that game. And then the coaching staff just kind of took it away from them. That's, that's got to affect them to some degree. Yeah, that'd be a valid point, bro. But I, you can also see the fact that the new interim de- um, defensive coordinator is going to be super motivated and, and Frank Bush, he's going to get those guys ready to go. And Gase, man, Gase has a lot to prove. He wants to win that game so he can go to ownership and be like, hey, look, this is all on Greg Williams. you got to give me another year. That's really my biggest concern, man. I don't want Adam Gase, obviously. I fucking can't stand the guy. The guy's straight garbage. But Sunday kind of scares me, man. I, you know, Seattle's defense is atrocious. So, like, if they can keep it close, we can see something similar to what we saw on Sunday against Oakland. Yeah, but you know, one thing about yeah. Seattle, man, that I think you'll be okay is, man, yeah, their receivers are A1, bro. And Russell Wilson. Yeah, you're right. Russell right Wilson is, is, is definitely definitely a good quarterback, man. But, um, yeah, bro, I, I can see these guys being motivated, playing against Jamal, wanting to prove a point, believe, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, but I hope Jamal still has a playbook, bro, because you know Gates don't change shit. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, give that shit up. You know, I hope the defense have a good week. And I hate to say that, bro, but I'm just being honest, bro. I don't I, – I, you know, um, Meaningless win in December. What the hell does that mean to anybody, bro? What's that? Exactly. That's gonna make you feel. Yo, now if Jacksonville win, hey, bro, I'm all for victory, bro. Let's get that. But if Jacksonville lose, then we lose as well. I mean, it's just my point. I'm not gonna lie, bro. On Sunday, I was mother f and I was so pissed because I thought we we're gonna win that game, and I saw that cover zero, and I saw Carr throw that beautiful ball to Rugs. I was like, oh my god. I honestly felt like we won the Super Bowl. I'm 32 years old, man, so I've been through a lot with these fucking Jets. And, dude, I was more happy on Sunday than I was when um, we beat New England, you know, away in the playoffs, bro. That's how happy I was because I know that first overall Damn, pick is going to be – That bro. first overall pick is going to determine everything, bro, because if it's true that the owners are really going to get rid of Adam Gase, then, bro, like we're going to get some – we're going to get a serious head coach in here, bro. I could see Jim Harbaugh or I could see a Doug Peterson come in and really change everything because, bro, the problem with this organization is is that – Everybody that wears this uniform, we're a laughing stock, bro. Like, if we go to a bar where we're in a jet uniform, everybody's laughing at us. 
bro, everything's going to change instantly if we bring a guy like Bill Cowher in. And people are saying that he's too old. He's been out of the game. Bro, he's 63 years old. You know who's older than him? Pete Carroll's six years older than him. And you don't see anybody from Seattle say Pete Carroll's old. Nah, man. I, no, I completely agree with you. I mean, yeah. I mean, get Prime time. Oh, yeah, Tyrone. No, no. I, I was just saying, no, no. He hit the valid point. No, but what I think is well, though, is I think that somebody like, like Kyle, he, 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 he demands respect. He commands his players to be accountable, and that's what that's what we haven't had. You know, we had a players coach, or we have I don't know what the fuck Gates is, but you don't have, you don't hold these guys accountable. These guys are late for me. These guys are not showing up. They're not they're not doing their job. And what we've been asking for for the last four or five years is hold these guys accountable. When you're not playing good, sit your ass down. They're not doing that. They keep playing guys. They keep playing veterans that don't show up to practice or don't or don't show up to meetings. But you yet and still you still playing these guys. No, they're not held accountable. A, 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 a true head coach. Was set his best player to prove a point. That's what that's what leadership is, man. And we've been lacking that. So getting a coach in that can come in here, bro, and change. And listen, and I'm, I'm being honest, man. Prior to this, the Jets was not a good job to get. But having the first pick of the draft, ninety million dollars in cap money, bro, and a, a, a slew of picks in the draft, bro. You can turn this shit around real quick, bro. So I'm what it. Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. Like I honestly think that if we get that first overall pick. Number one choice is going to be to come over to New York, man, and coach his team. So, I mean, we can really bring somebody serious. And the ones that say, oh, no, I want a Pat Fitzgerald or a Matt Campbell, bro, like they've never coached in the NFL. It's completely different than college. You know, we need somebody that has already uh, the accolades of coaching in the NFL, that has success coaching in the NFL. We need a guy like a freaking Jim Harbaugh or obviously a Bill Cowher. That's the route that we have to go. We need that first overall pick. It means everything for our long-term success. Because a win here, win next week, a win following week does nothing for this organization. Absolutely nothing. We're not going to get one of those coaches by having the second overall pick. Because, bro, I, nope. I love Sam Darnold, but Sam Darnold is done over here. He's completely done. We got we to gotta move on. Great, great call, man. Thank you for calling, man. We definitely appreciate it. Thanks a lot, fellas. Take care, man. Hey, bro, have you a good too. night, bro. Frank was all fired up. We're going to go to Steve in Essex Hills. Steve, what's up, man? What's up, Steve? Hey, guys. How you doing? What's up, Steve? Good. How you doing, man? Awesome. Um, this timing was perfect. Just got off hold, and uh, here we go. Hey, I want to uh, I want to give, uh, first of all, great show, guys. Uh, you guys make watching Jets games fun. Don't change a thing. We don't want to see – split Y2 banana calls drawn on the whiteboard, you know, leave that to uh, NFL films or, uh, you know, Costell or whoever, not Costell. I don't know who does that uh, on, well, now it's all YouTube anyway. Uh, so I want to say that first and foremost, um, you know, I've written you guys a lot during shows and, you know, I got to respect prime uh, with his uh, loyalty to Donald. I really, I really respect right. that, but, but, you know, I'm taking the other side, and I'm going to side with Tyson, um, you know, because I know he was done, I don't know what week, four or five, uh, <laughs> maybe sooner. I don't know, but you've been steadfast. You're done. The page has been turned, and I am, I'm right there with you, even though I did say I would keep an open mind. And then even in a game where he does well, like this Sunday, Two, you know, two fumbles, and you can't blame the line when you're having the ball seven seconds, you're tapping it, you're holding it. Yeah, I've just seen this too many times. You know when a quarterback just gets rattled, can't feel the pressure, you know, doesn't move his feet. And I'm not saying, look, a lot of that's coaching, and the kid could end up being good. I don't know what his ceiling is, but I think he's reached the ceiling with the Jets. So, unfortunately, um, you know, they just – they just didn't do anything with this kid. Um, so that's where we are. So basically we're looking at, we're staring into the abyss. I was going to quote Wall Street back to the original version. Uh, I think it was like a 1987 movie. Um, the Jets are staring at the, into the abyss right now. And losing is winning. That's the way I see it. Losing is winning. 0-16 yep. is the goal. I mean, look, I wouldn't be proud of it. Um, you know, we'll be one of, what, three teams. But look at where Cleveland is now. 
And if that's what it takes, I'd like to go one and fifteen, and Jacksonville wins two games. But we 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 don't have that luxury yet. And then look to Tyson's point, and and to, and Prime as well. You guys have said it. This will be a stain on Adam Gates, right? We always talk about Cotite. You know, let's have him one game worse, because. This was the worst hiring in, in in probably the history. Well, maybe Kotek was. I don't know. But this will probably surpass that as the worst hiring, head coach hiring in Jets history. Um, so let's throw this guy out um, and let's have him suffer through 16. Yep. No, Steve, right? I, I completely agree so, with you. That's, and that's the, that's, the whole, like, that, that's the whole notion that, like, oh, we should be embarrassed. We should be embarrassed. Like, we haven't made the playoffs in 10 years. That's embarrassing. Like, at this point, 0-16 oh, doesn't embarrass me because we're already, we're already here. We're already rock bottom. Everybody thinks we suck. They know we're inept. They know we're incompetent. So if it means 0-16 oh, guarantees Gase is fired, fine. Cool. I'm cool with it. And like you said, dude, if that is tied to him, he deserves it, dude. Because he ruined Darnold. He ruined our franchise. He set us back. And now it's like, hey, you got to own it. Let him have it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't care, man. I honestly don't care. Yeah. And, and look, we go when we go 0 16, he's earned, he's earned it. He's, he's earned, earned it. Right. He's yep. got to wear, he's gotta he's wear that like a, scarlet, like a scarlet letter, man. Yep. He, he, will, be, he will be disgraced <laughs> in the NFL. And you know what? The, the, I, look, I don't want to just hate the guy to hate the guy, but he's done, every, he's, he's done everything to deserve it. You know, he's he's not a like the press either. conference to his attitude. <laughs> exactly. It's just, yep. come on. There's not one likable thing about lose. him. Nothing. I mean, and we're, look, you guys give people the benefit of the doubt. You're good guys. You can just tell. And it's like, this guy is arrogant. He throws uh, Greg Williams under the bus the first chance he gets. You know, look, that was a terrible call. But you know what? A lot of times when you make a call that no one's made in 20 years, you get pretty, like, wow, no one saw that coming, right? Let's say they get there and sack him. You know, that supposedly was like some game with Gruden, you know, and, and, and we lost. He played roulette, bad move. He lost. Um, I wouldn't have fired him. I, I really, you know, would not have fired him. Um, it's it's just a terrible look, calls. I think, because he, he didn't fire anybody on his offensive staff, which was – equally bad, if not worse, over a, a longer period of time. So when you don't have that precedent for holding anybody on your offensive staff accountable, yet the first sign, you know, where your defensive coordinator does something egregious, yep, he's out the door because you don't like him. Well, uh, it right. doesn't work. So if they, if they get the number one pick, too, that means they get the number one pick in every round, plus the picks they got from trading uh, Jamal, who's not having that great of a season, and he's, he's hurt. He's been hurt, too, a couple of games, I think. Um, he can't cover anybody. Uh, he had no picks when he was a Jet. And look, I liked him, but the attitude and, you know, part of that's Gates, too. I mean, he, he saw the writing on the wall. He goes, I got to get out of here. Um, I'm not wasting my career here. Um, you know, he talked a lot. But I, you know, I liked Adam, but he's chirping, you know, get a few picks before you do that. You know, I mean, I, I didn't love that. So, and look. We got a haul for him. Now, the big question is this. I'll ask you guys, and then I'll shut up. With Bill Cower, so I love the guy. I always have. Um, I'll take him, any Steelers coach, right? Um, you know, the, uh, what's his name? Tomlin. They got Mike Tomlin, right? That's his name. Uh, yep, yep. That guy's a hard nose. You know, Bill Cower, remember the guy, he grabbed the face mask of the players? Like, you look at me. Get in here. That's what I want to see. Parcells would do that same shit. We need a – I don't care who it is. I, I hope it's Cower. I would, I would do somersaults. He's taking time off. He's going to be fresh again, hungry again. You know, Pittsburgh won every season, every season. And he did it, I think, before Roethlisberger. Then he got Roethlisberger. Um, you know, he was doing it with everybody. Their defenses are always tough. Um, you know, now, now, you know, Tomlin's just as good. I'd take him in a heartbeat as well. But – they seem to have the culture, and he's going to change. He would change the culture uh, of the entire. So if we don't get Cower, because who knows, you know, about these rumors? And I heard that he's going to have to answer on on Sunday to to uh, Boomer answer the rumors. But he's not going to say anything because Gates is still a coach. Well, he won't say. Gonna, he he's not going to say. I mean, he's not going to say anything because he can't. There's, the job's not. It's not vacant. He's a classy guy. He'll be like, you know what? None of these jobs are open. I'm not going to make a comment. You know, that's just the way he's going to handle it. Right. So, I mean, if we don't get Cower, 
whoever comes in, they, I want, they, they have to just be no nonsense and be like, I'm not taking any of this shit. You know, and I thought Bowles, because I like Bowles, but he just wasn't vocal enough. And he was like a totally respectable guy, stand-up guy. Like he looked like, all right, I'm running the show. But it's kind of funny. It didn't seem like to translate, you know, too well to the players. Uh, so, you know, just, just to hear your thoughts on all that. And, and, no, I mean, you know, no, I mean, that's – well, first of all, Steve, thank, thank you for calling in. We definitely appreciate it. No, you're absolutely right. This team lacks discipline. It lacks leadership. It lacks accountability. This next guy has got to come in, kick some ass, and hold everybody accountable, yep. push the, and have the ability to tell the media, listen, back off, like – not play this whole media game that Gase has been playing, not do it, like just wipe out all the bullshit surrounding this fucking team because there's so much shit going on, and a prominent guy like Coward gets rid of all of that because nobody's fucking with him. They're just not. So that's what has to happen, man. It's just – but thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. You too. Right, Thank bro, you, Joseph. Nice. All right, we're going to go to Tom in South Carolina. Tom, what's up, man? Come on, Tom. Hey, how you guys doing? What's up, man? Not too bad. How about you? Not too bad. Uh, been appreciating the live streams this year. I recently moved down here to South Carolina and uh, made the season not so bad. <laughs> appreciate awesome. it, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I just wanted to talk about the Williams firing, which, I mean, is justified. He was going to be fired at the end of the season anyway. But the fact that they let Gase come out and announce that it was his decision scares me, for one. I mean, I understand coaches hire their own staff, fire their own staff, but I don't know. So, something's just... Well, apparently, you know what it is? To be, to be honest with you, Tom, this is what I think would happen. The Jets, everybody was shitting on them all across the NFL, saying they're tanking, they're this, they're that. So as an organization, they probably said, you know, we got to hold somebody accountable so we're not just getting accused of just tanking and losing on purpose and everything else. So they're saying, hey, listen, he made, he made a horrible mistake. We fired him for it. We are not losing on purpose. So Gase talked to Jaime. He talked to Chris Johnson. He talked to Joe Douglas. As an organization, they said, you know, we got to fire this guy. They all agreed. Good. I think a lot of it was just, just perception to say they're not losing on purpose and try to cover their asses a little bit. Like, I don't put, like, I know people were worried about, well, why can Gates fire him? I think they were in a spot where they had to because they're like, everybody's like, dude, how do you, how do you keep his job? And it's been festering. Keep in mind, people outside people like Boomer, everybody else, they wanted Greg Williams fired for his comments about Adam Gates four weeks ago when he questioned his play calling and started pointing fingers at him. So this has been festering. It was, for them, it's the right time, and they did it. Like, I don't. I still think Gates getting fired at the end of the season, man. I think there's no chance he stays there. Yeah, uh, that I honestly, for the most part, do believe that. It's just that little bit in the back of my mind. The fact that he has any power whatsoever is mind blowing. Um. Anyway, the second part is um. I don't know if y'all heard of the second part about the cower rumors that um. His wife is apparently a big Jets fan, yep. and she refers she refers to the Jets as we in the household, and so that that like I wasn't convinced till I heard that, and you know what I mean. Like even if we do get a guy like that and Land Lawrence, um, what I'm worried about is this uh, ownership not giving the right power structure. You know what I mean to a guy like that, to a CEO. Well, I mean. I think no, nah, bro. Kyle, yeah, but I think it's, Kyle yeah, not gonna, yeah. He's not. Yeah. Coming, he's not coming. He's not coming in. He's not coming in with that 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 we that that power bullshit struggle. Yo, he he's a he's a prominent head coach, man. Even the Johnsons will respect who he is and what he's done in the organization he came from. So if he decided to come in, bro, trust me, all that report to me shit that's out yep. the window, bro. Because he he wouldn't even take that job if it was that kind of party. Yep. Yeah, I, I, if they open the checkbook, you never know. Yeah, Tom, I mean, this is, Tom, This to me, this is very simple. The Jets go 0-16, get the number one pick. You fire Gase. The first phone call you make, you don't, you just, you're making, if, if not making it now, hey, listen, what does it take to get you here? How much money do you want? Where do we send the check? Obviously, you do the interviewing process, everything else. You figure it all out, and Joe Douglas has to realize, listen, man, we're bringing in a Hall of Fame coach here that is going to change this whole fucking organization around much faster than we, you know, it's going to be awesome. Are you a part of it or not? 
this is what he wants. Can you deal with it? If not, like primetime said before, you're out. Like you're, 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 or you can take a back. You can be like the the personnel guy or some shit. You you have a different role in the organization. We'll find somebody else here to do. Like you know, what I mean, we can no, we can give you a new, you can have a new title. So you're not you're not general manager. You're the general manager of the scouting department or some shit. But hey, you figured it out. But Tom, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. Have a good hey, night, bro. Thanks for having thanks for having me on. Have a good night, guys. Awesome. Thank you too. Yeah. We're gonna go. Could you, you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> could, could be could you working from home and shit. Coward, bro? <laughs> could you imagine that hiring Coward, bro? Explain that to the fan base, bro. That shit will blow up, bro. Oh my god, that should be crazy. Whatever Bill, he Bill wants, Cow- he can have Bill- it. Yep, we're gonna go to uh, David in Virginia. David, what's up, man? What's going on, on Tyson? Prime time, Tyrone. Listen, I'm with the rest of the callers. Bill Cowher is the freaking godfather of professional football. He's one of the heads of the five families, Bill Cowher. He's going to bring in his people, <laughs> his offensive coordinator, his defensive coordinator, his quarterback coach, his special teams coach. They're all going to come in. They're all going to want to play hard for him and coach hard for him because of the respect. It's all about respect, guys. Bill Cowher brings respect to the New York Jets. As far as the off season goes, I'm looking forward to getting rid of Sam. I hate to say it, I was a believer, but he just hasn't shown enough. Free agency, we got to go get a receiver. I like Kenny Galladay from Detroit. I don't know about you guys, but him, Mims, and Crowder in the slot, get a respectable back out of the draft, show up the offensive line, maybe get an edge rusher in the corner. I know that's a whole lot. we got a whole lot of holes to fill, but I think it's doable. I think we'll be prominent in maybe the next two years, and we'll get out of this hole of – Laugh at us with the New York Jets. What do you guys think? I hey, Tyrone. Agree every aspect of what, I agree in every aspect of what you're saying, bro. First of all, what part of Virginia are you from, man? Huh? I'm out of Richmond, right outside of Richmond. Okay, okay. All right. I live in Williamsburg, so I was asking. Oh, okay, but, um, okay. You ain't that far from me. All right, but I want to say this right here, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, turning this thing around, man, is what we all want. I mean, it's no point. Listen, man, I'm sorry. As a Jeff fan, we got to want this to happen to turn this thing Absolutely. around. Man. Like, we know Absolutely. we're at the point to where it has to be turned around. So a guy like that coming in <laughs> does everything for me. What do you think, Prime Time? Same exact thing, man. Whatever he wants, you give him give him the blank check. You give him whatever kind of power he wants. It's just – it's such – when you've been the laughing stock for so long, having the problem right. guy to come in – I mean, I, I, listen, I, I would love a college guy. I think a college guy could be good. I think a B enemy could be good. There's a lot of different ways you could build a winner. But for the Jets erasing yeah. the stench of the Just last 10 the years, Jets. especially the last two right. weeks, I don't want to take no Absolutely. chances. Bill Cower, Absolutely. if you could get him, whatever the hell he wants, bring him in. We're all in the same boat. And, and, and every and cheers to Greg Williams, guys. Like when I know you guys are doing shotgun and stuff over the, over the live, live stream. I just wanted to keep doing it. I, I love it. <laughs> Um, I took a bowl hit. I don't know if I can say that on on radio, but I took a big bowl hit when we win the Rose caught that touchdown pass. O and sixteen, like you said, a, a win in December does nothing for us at all. We have to have the number one pick so we get the top coach, we get the top player, the free agents will come to New York. Imagine Bill Cowher in New York, he'll get whoever he wants because everybody's gonna want to play for this guy. You know, he the chin. Yep. Why can how could you not want to play for the chin? You know what I mean? No, it's it's it, man. There, there's so many. It, it just meets so many needs and it fills so many holes. It's just wild. David, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. All right, you have got have a good one. Go Jets. Have you too, bro. Have a good night. All right, we're gonna go to Jake in NYC. What's up, Jake? What's, going What's on, up, Jake? guys? Another night. How you doing? What's up, Jake? Another night. <laughs> Living the dream. Living Absolutely. the dream. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I got two. I guess you guys are coming to the end of the show, so I'll make it quick, like a Spitfire thing. Um, my first question, I guess, is from last weekend, Tyrone. I haven't again to know you a little bit now in this show, but what, what's your beef with Field? I need to ask you that first. Uh oh, here it goes. Oh no, <laughs> nah, bro. It's no, it's no beef with him, bro. I don't. I think he's a great player. I think he's going to be a good player at the, the next level. I just think that he, I don't think he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think I don't think he's ready to step in and um and be that piece. I don't think that you he's said the world was gonna right be now. over. You said the world yep, was gonna be said. over. Uh, well, exactly I mean, well, I mean, I mean, if if you're not gonna take Trevor Lawrence, man, to me the world is over. I think that why well, take a player that you know, that, that you don't know if you can come in and step in right now and he play? Double down. If that's the case, if that's the case, then yo, I'm gonna double down all night. This is the fucking truth. 
I mean, if you hire if you hire a coach oh, like boy. Eric the Enemy, yeah, you can get this kid you can get this kid to make this kid good. I don't think this kid will, will come in and be able to play and be ready to roll right now. I don't think he hit the ground running. Is I don't it, think he's ready for is that. Is it is it is it the Ohio State stigma? Is that what it is? No, nah, not at all, man, because, you know, I'm not big on USC quarterbacks either. No, nah, that's not the case, bro. I just don't think that from what I've seen from him that he's going to step in the next level and be immediate impact right now. I don't th- I don't see that. You know, I watched the game last week, you know what I'm saying? I think the kid, I think the kid's a good player, don't get me wrong. I just don't think he's going to be able to step in like Trevor would do. I think Trevor's going to come in from day one and be able to and be able to run the offense and be effective and play at a high level. These kids going to have some growing pains, and that's, you know, and that's not what we need right now. I think it's if you're not taking Trevor, I think, they, you know, either Bill or Ron Sam will, will figure out a whole new plan. But if we do draft him, I'm going to support him in every way we can. You know what I'm saying? I'm not making those decisions. I'm just saying, if, if for me, it's Trevor Lawrence to what I want. I think it's best for us right now. That's what this team needs. You need a leader like that. So, nah, there's no beef with him at all, bro. I don't want nobody thinking that, man. I have no problem. The kid's a great player. Sure sounds player. like beef. Wait, 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 wait. You say, you say no beef, they say he's not ready to play. That sounds like beef, man. I no, it's not like you trying to start. It's not like you, it's not like you trying to start no, some shit, I mean, but it, it is no, what it is. But what, no, I mean, no, no, we'll, we'll, he, ask, we'll ask Jake. Let's ask Jake. Jake, that sounds like beef, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it does. And you know what's part? Let me, ask you, let me ask you this, Tyrone. Do you think Joey Burrow's worth the number one pick? Let me ask you that first. Do I, do I, did I think that? Yeah. Do you think did he's I worth know, the number one pick? I, I think that if he would play, if he would came to us and had Adam Gates, I don't know. I think he had no. It was just a question, right. Tyrone. Listen, a simple question: Is Joe Burrow worth the number one pick in the draft last year? For for Cincinnati, yes. For the Jets, fuck no. What? No. You no, know Joe Burrow, Burrow also. Joe Burrow went to Ohio State, man. And the thing is also that Justin Fields came from Georgia, came to Ohio. I'm sorry. I think the Ohio State stigma is in your head. I really believe that. I'm, I really no, don't know listen, what listen, listen, just, listen. Dude, dude, Justin, listen no, 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 hear me. Hear, I want to – no, I, I heard your take. Hear my take now, okay? Justin Uh-oh. Fields. <laughs> wow. Stud at, okay? Listen, okay? I've watched him for two years, okay? We talk about Patrick Mahomes. You know what Patrick Mahomes does so amazingly well besides the fact of having Andy Reid? The guy is able to run out of the pocket and throw just like Aaron Rodgers does. I'm going to give you an example. Last year, Justin Fields, okay, this was against, I believe, Penn State. He injured his knee, okay, guy injured his knee, ran to the sideline, put a brace on his knee, went back, rolled to the left, and threw a 30-yard touchdown. I'm sorry, was Sam Darnold going to go and do that? Yeah, I know he had that one magical play where, like, he went in Buffalo, but that's grit and toughness. And you really have to understand the intangibles of Justin Fields. And I'm telling you, I'm still going to take Trevor Lawrence at one. But at number two, Justin Fields, if he goes to Jacksonville, who's to say a lot of coaches won't want to go to Jacksonville? I'm telling you, Eric the enemy won't be shocked to go there. I think the enemy's going to go to the Chargers because of Herbert. But Justin Fields, dude, this kid would be the number one pick overall, 1,000%, if it wasn't for this generational talent label that Lawrence has. I'm sorry. I just think that everyone is scared of the Ohio State stigma because of Dwayne Haskins. Haskins, I still think, is going to be a starter somewhere if you give him a chance. Because he was actually so Jake, the reason Joe Burrow actually, didn't become the quarterback. I actually, was like, of that. I actually like Haskins, though. I think Haskins will be a starter. Oh, my God. So, you know, Tyrone, what you're proving to us, what you're proving to us, you're proving to us. You're proving something to us is you don't know shit about quarterbacks. So, but, Jake, we got, we got to wrap things up. So, what we want to do is going to the when it comes closer to the draft, we're going to bring you on, and you and Tyrone can debate this out. We'll give you 15, 20 minutes to do it, dude. We'll give you plenty of time to do it. Come right around the draft. We'll bring you on, and you can just – you and Tyrone can battle. All right. Most importantly, prime time, have your Trulies ready this weekend. I don't want to see Club Soda again, okay? <laughs> I have, a night, have a good night, man. Have a good night, bro. Hi, guys. Uh, have a good oh, night, bro. Shit. That's funny as shit. All right, as we wrap things up here, um, Tyrone, do you have your parting shots? As now we have callers attacking you. I, I, I put a big smile on my face. Yo, man, my parting shots is number one, man. I did thank Tyson for the shirt. That's some bullshit. Number two, <laughs> they've been attacking me all night, man. I ain't getting no help. I'm out here by myself. Jay, where the fuck you at? I love you, bro. But um, nah, man. Yo, I love this team. I love what we're doing, bro. And like I said, man, keep losing. Prime time. Shout out to Tyrone for getting the fans off my back for at least a couple of days, giving somebody else a target on his back. So, again, good job, Tyrone. 
Um, as far as Sam Darnold goes, I'm putting the, the sword down, putting the jersey away. It, it's come to an end, unfortunately. I fought the good fight. I wish Sam well. Tank is on, 0-12, four more weeks to go. Secure that number one pick, get that head coach. Light at the end of the tunnel, baby. We tweeted out the, we tweeted out the link. We're going to put it on our social media. Please help the Jersey City Fire Department donate some toys. Um, it's really, really important, man. Give back wherever you can. Thank everybody who tunes in. Thank everybody joining us on the live stream and everything else. I'm blessed to be a part of a show with prime time in Hollywood. I'm just a small piece of the puzzle, obviously. So, everybody, thank you for joining us, and we'll talk to you all next week. Later. Have a good night. Bye.